we have gotten so much of your feedback about the upper body being more weak so we're going to try and uh, concentrate on the core today try strengthening the core as we work out other workouts in the course of the week we hope you enjoy the core workout today before we start let's get a warm-up nearly we crisscrossing the legs then touch down crisscross touch down cross down crisscross down okay doing 30 counts these are four to the kazi five six seven if you can't crisscross the legs just step on the side go down step on the other side go down step on the side go down step on the other side go down okay your own pace if you can't crisscross as fast as Nelly is doing just hop or two pole pole then down then down take it on your own pace good job to the left eight five four three two those are twenty ten more one two three you're almost done four five good job six push it seven eight nine and ten from there we're going on a high just knee up there couple knee up bring it down 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 let's go one two forty count three four five six seven good job eight nine there's a ten one two three four five six push it ready seven eight nine those are 20 20 to go one two let's go three four five six seven eight nine those are 30 10 more one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten our sit-ups today we're doing them with two jobs so you'll do a sit-up you come up give me a right and a left jump then you go down okay maybe you ready yes are you ready hope you have your mat ready you start maybe are you comfortable yeah. gonna push forward a bit good job perfect are we ready then we go up sit up position right left jump slow then we go back down all right all our workouts today we're going to turn them so we're starting with a 60 second workout 60 you go to 50 seconds 40 seconds 30 seconds and it's around till however much time we have okay perfect so we're starting with 60 seconds and our timer starts now let's go jump we jump and go down easy up give me jump jump then down good job let's go up jump jump then down up jump jump then down for only 60 seconds okay if you can do it faster no problem push yourself if you can do it as fast as your partner or even as nearly take your time if your feet cannot come up or if your feet are actually coming up as you you try to do the sit up try to get a table or a seat or a couch lock them there okay zishikwa na mguu ama mtu akushike ama zishikwa na meza ama zishikwa na na kiti just get them glued there okay then you're able to do uh, the sit up let's go nearly we have how many more seconds? 10 more seconds. Push it. Good job. Up. Nice one. Nice one. And then our timer is up. Good job. From there, another one minute. For the next one minute, we're going to do a plank with a knee tuck and a leg extension. Okay? Let's go. Up. Good job. Up. Good job. Take it easy. Then up, take it easy. In, up, in, and up. Good job. Let's go. In, up. Easy. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. You're the only competitor to yourself. Take your time. Good job. If you can do it faster, remember it's a timed workout 60 seconds. How many are you able to do? We're still on the plank position. Try and maintain the posture. Okay? Good job. Let's go. Now, breathe, <sighs> breathe, yes, breathe, 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 breathe. Your lungs need to get as much oxygen as possible, so breathe. Breathe, breathe. Good job, Nelly. On the left, on the left. 
We have six more seconds to go. Push it for six more seconds. Push it. Push it, push it. We stand in the corner, our timer is up. Good job. Relax. From there, we get the V up. Okay. So now on the V up position, Nelly you will be seated. Her legs will be up. Her upper body will be lying down on the floor. Then at a corner, put the two as if she wants to touch her toes. She'll be making that V. Okay. V. So it's called a V up. Good. Good job. Take it easy. Then up. Good job. I want to take it easy for those who cannot go as fast as possible. If you are able to do it faster, by all means, kindly push. Push it harder. It's all time. We have 35 seconds to go. Good job, Nelly. Let's go. Good. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Even if those legs tremble, secure up with you. Keep them there. Maintain them there. Okay? Nelly, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. You have 18 more seconds to go. Push yourself. Push it. Good job. Take your time. Breathe. Good. Breathe. Breathe. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You're almost there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good job. Good job. Let's go. Push it. Watch your good to make it. It's okay. Our timer is up. Our timer is up. You okay, Nelly? Yes, I'm okay. Breathe. Breathe. From there, then we are the toe taps. Now, the toe taps, Nelly will sit. Then her upper body will go low, down on the, on the mat. Then she'll fold her knees. Then she'll be able to touch on the sides. The target is to touch the shoe. Okay. If you can go all the way to your toes, even better. Okay. Nelly, you ready? Good job. Let's go. Push it. Push it. Give me some sweet. Give me some sweet. Give me some sweet. Give me some sweet. Yes, you go. Good job. Push it. Push it. Let's go. Let's go. You're doing fine. To the target is my tire the side. Eh? Yes, let's go. Push it. Still have time. We still have 30 more seconds to go. 30 more seconds to go. Push it. Push it, push it. Let's go, let's go, Nelly. Let's go, let's go. Good job. Good job, good job, good job, good job. Push it. Push yourself. You need to push yourself, Nelly. Let's go. Push it, push it, push it. Push it. Still have more time to go. And then, Nelly, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We have eight more seconds. Eight more seconds, eight more seconds. Let's go. Push it. You're doing fine. You're doing it right. Apple, push it. Good job. And stop. Our timer stops there. As we set the next timer for the next workout. Our next workout will be in the plank hip dips. Okay. So we'll get into a, a, a plank position. Elbow plank position. Then your hips will be swinging from one end to the other touching the mat. Plank hip dips. Others call it uh, the London Bridge. Uh, the names, so many names for it. But yes, uh, that's our next workout. Then are you ready? So put your elbows down. Yes, elbows down. Perfect. Nice. Remember, posture is very important. Your core needs to be very well intact. Good job. Let's go. Push it. Good job. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Good. 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 Push it. Yes, you're doing it right. Skuma. Yeah, come a Russian to feel, eh? Yes, yes. to the cousin. We need to strengthen the core. Core is very, very important at the end of the day. Core very, 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 very important. Push it. We have 25 more seconds to go. You're doing fine. Breathe. Just breathe. Breathe. As you work out, breathe. Breathe. Fungi hewa. Good job, baby. Tap it down, tap it down, yes, tap it down, tap it down. With a chin, ensure you can go as far as you can. If you can touch the mat on the floor, well, good, well, and good. If you can't, it's fine. But the target is to actually make sure that your hips touch the mat. Our timer stops there. We we'll start the next set. We're starting our second, our second set. This set, we're timing it 45 seconds. Let me put my timer ready. My timer is ready. We're starting with the first workout sit up. 45 seconds, okay? Let's go, start. Maybe you ready? Yes. Let's go, start. 
for 12 seconds. Push it. And two jumps. Two, then down. Let's go up. One, two, then down. Good job. Let's go. One, two, then down. Good one again. One, two, then down. Good job. Push it. One, two, down. Perfect. Let's go. 20 more seconds to go, lady. Let's go. Good. Do it on your pace. If you can go faster than Nelly, please do. If you can't, maintain her pace. Okay? Let's go. Easy. Two. Then down. If Nelly is still faster for you, take your own pace. Pole pole. The important thing is finish the workout. Timer is up. Good. We set the next timer for the next workout. 45 seconds. Still pushing your cardio. We want your cardio endurance level to grow high, okay? So you don't want to take such a long break at the end of the day. As much as we want to give those muscles, uh, the core muscles, a few more, se few seconds to actually relax. Uh, we don't want to make it. We don't want to make it too much prolonged, okay? Yes. Then we good. Yes. So we're coming back to the second workout. Plank with a knee tuck and a leg extension. Are we ready, Nelly? Forty-five seconds. We start now. Let's go. Easy. Take your time. Your speed. Do it right, the motion should be right. It's also very good for your glutes. Good. Good. Tell it. Push it, push it, push it, you're doing fine. Have 15 more seconds to go. 15 seconds, you're doing right. Hold it, that plan. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Good job. Good job. Mm -hmm. And our timer stops there. Good job, Nelly. Are we ready, Nelly? We're going for the rear. 45 seconds. We good? We set? Perfect. Let's start. Let's go. 45 seconds. Our timer starts now. Good. You go on your speed. Maybe I want you to take it on a slower speed. Down. Yes. Up or then up. Yes. If you can't go as low as Nelly is, if she's too low for you, please make it faster. If she's still faster for you, take it slower and on your own speed. Your own speed, okay? Good. Let's go. Good. Good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. 18 more seconds. You're almost there. You're almost there. Good. Good. Good job. Push it. Push it, push it, push it, push it. We're almost there. Almost. And our timer stops now. Good job. Relax. Breathe. Our timer starts now. Let's go. This one you can give me some speed. You can do it faster. Please give me some speed. To be able to do more. And squeeze those sides. This is my tire. Turn the cousin. Good. Push it. Ah, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. 25 more seconds, let's go, let's go. Push it, push it, you're doing fine. Good job. Push it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You see, that's what we're trying to work on. We're trying to strengthen this core so that even your endurance, this stomach, this core can actually be able to take so much workouts without taking a longer break, okay? Tell it. Now our timer stops there. Good job. Good job. Our timer. Let me set my 45 seconds. And we start now. Let's go. Take your time. Take the hip down. Take your time. Take the hip down. Turn the navy. Good job. Good job. Good. 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 Yes. Tap it down. Tap it down. Down. The other side. Good job. Let's go. Push it. Good. Good. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. You're doing fine. Kamai Kuzi Misawa. But the target is to make sure that it touches down. So we pole, 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 pole. We work on it. Good. Push it, baby. Good job. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Till you hear my time. Until I tell you to stop. Don't stop. In the layer. And breathe. Now our timer is up. Relax. We take a 30 second breather. We go to our third set. On our third set, we're doing a 30 second workout. So we're reducing the time again to 30 seconds. 
Okay? Get into that baby pose position, relax and breathe. You need to breathe in. Okay? Don't deny your body the oxygen it requires. Good job, Mary. Good job, good job, good job. Good job. You're doing fine. The consistency is all that matters. Okay? Your feedbacks, very well, very welcoming, uh, very warm. We appreciate the engagement and uh, we hope that today you're not the same way you are when you started the workout. Good. Our, our timer is up for the breather. So we start again. We're starting with the sit-ups again. Once more. Now this time around we're doing 30 seconds. So 30 seconds sit-up. Try and make sure that you can do as many reps as possible based on the time. You okay? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let me set my timer. When my timer is ready. Are we ready? Let me start. Good job. Let's go. Start. Give me a jump. Down. Down. Good job. Come up. Go on your space. Take your time. Come up. Give me a strong jump to the right. Jump to the left. Then go back down. Easy. Good job. Up. Let's go. Down. Good job, baby. Let's go. Jump. Jump. Then down. Good job. Let's go. Push it. Then down. Come up. Give me a jump. Jump. Then down. Our timer is up. Good job. From there to the knee of the plank knee with attack, knee tucks and the leg extension. Still doing 30 seconds. 30 seconds. You ready? Yes. Ready, are you okay? Yeah, okay. Bring in the knee and to kick it back out straight, okay? Are you ready, Mary? Yes, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Good job. Let's start. Tema starts now. Good job. Let's go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yes. I like that. I like that. I like that. 20, 20, 20, 20. Try to get this workout later. Engage us on Facebook, NTV, Kenya, online. Tell us your feedback. Number two, take the workout. Repeat it on your own time. Try to beat your time. Okay? Good job, good job, good job, good job. Try and make sure that if you are if you are only doing 20 sit-ups for every 30 seconds, try and improve that 20 sit-ups to at least 21 within 30 seconds. Okay, that's the growth we are looking for. That bit of consistency will give you that growth. Okay, good job, Nelly. From there, we're going back to the V-ups. Breathe, 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 breathe. Good job. Breathe. 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 Are you okay? We start. We're getting back to the V-ups. Okay. Good job. Are we ready, Mary? My timer is ready. And let's start. Let's go. Good. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. You know I'm really, you know I'm really. Yes, Sipo. You know I'm really. Good job. Yes, Sibo. Good job. Push it, push it, push it, push it. You're doing it right. Turn the left. Good. The left. Don't give up. You should, don't even, don't even allow that thought to get into your head. Don't. Good. Push it. Push it. And our time is up. Good job. 30 seconds are over like that. Yes. Awesome. You're doing fine. Congratulations. Let me set my timer for the next workout. 30 seconds. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're going now to the toe tops. From the toe tops to your hip tips. Then we stretch. And we'll have started our day and our morning in a healthy way. Cut us your vent TV. Teasing your body. Are we okay? Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Can we start? Can we start, Nelly? Yeah, we can. Can we start? Good job. Let's go. Start. 30 seconds. Give me some speed. Try to give me some speed. Give me as many reps as you can. As many reps as possible. Good. Push it. Swing it. Who's a chin? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 15, 15 more seconds. 20, 20, 20, 20. I'm also doing it here. At the start. 20. 20. 
See that same two stop. Push it. Good job. Now turn is up. From there, turn again out the plank with the hip dip. Or the London Bridge. Popularly known by different names, but it's the same workout, okay? Relax, Kidogo. At least 20 seconds. Good. Breathe. Okay? How are you feeling? Are you getting some cramps? No problem. If you feel these are cramps, no problem. Take a longer break, Kidogo, then you join back to the workout and you're able to join us back, okay? You okay, Lily? Yes. Are you feeling? You getting the cramps as well? Yes. Ole? Good? <sighs> Let's go. We start. 30 seconds and it's a wrap. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. Timer starts now. Let's go. Good job. Push it. Turn it. Yes. Yes. Turn it. Good. 15 more seconds. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it there. Take it down, take it down, take it down. Good job. Tap the floor. Tap the floor, tap the floor, good. Tap the floor, good job. Good job. Now time is up. Who knows? Who knew that minutes could be that short? Yeah? Hope you've enjoyed the ab workout. Remember, you can access this workout back on Facebook, NTV page. Get the workout, repeat the workout, share it with your friends. If you're getting the feedback, uh, if you're getting, uh, if your body is giving you a very positive feedback in terms of change, kindly let us know how did you start NTVT in your money, how heavy were you, what could you not do, what are you able to do today. Please kindly engage us and we'll be very glad to know how much of a success you have managed to do, courtesy of NTV. We love you, we appreciate you waking up early in the morning. Tuning your TV every day, staying loyal, being consistent, and watching the workout. Okay, so we're gonna finish up with a stretch, then we start we start our day for the day. Okay, so let's do the normal stretch here, standing. Good stuff. Just breathe. Good. Change the other leg. Good. Perfect. And then come reaching, toes up. Up. Touch your toes there yeah, with both hands and hold it. Good job, good job. Hold it, hold it. Change, change the other leg. Same, same. Sorry, sorry, balance. It's okay. You okay? Good job. Are you okay? At home, are you okay? Right, let's go. Hold it there. Your waistline here. The other side. Good, let's stretch on the side here. Good. Other side. Good. Twist your neck round. So funga macho, so funga macho. Good. Then the other side. From there, breathe in, breathe out, Nelly. Are you ready? Let's go, breathe in. Out. Good job, breathe in. Up. Last one, breathe in. Out. Thank you so much for staying tuned to NTVTZ Nyumbani. See you tomorrow. God bless. Bye bye. In these uncertain times, as we navigate the new normal, we hope that this note finds you and your family safe. We are indeed living in an increasingly challenging time, a time of disruption and a global lockdown, a disruption that has brought grief to some, financial difficulties to so many of us, and enormous changes to life as we know it. Now, though self-isolation may at times be hard, many people are discovering that it presents an opportunity for all of us to slow down, to pause and reflect 
Many will feel a painful sense of separation from their loved ones, but we know that deep down that is the right thing to do. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. And even as we navigate this new normal, your favorite show, The Trend, promises you to continue providing a huge variety of splendid entertainment full of iconic acts, Skype interviews with our local entertainment industry heroes. And we continuously promise to bring you nothing but the best. You, our viewer, we want to provide a steady guide of entertainment as we face the future. Staying in is the new going out. Stay home and stay safe. Make sure that you tune to The Trend every Friday right here on MTV. Habari marafiki zangu. Najua mmesikia mengi kuhusu kirusi kipya cha corona au COVID-19. Kama kinavyoitwa kitaalamu, kuna taarifa nyingi zinatolewa. Una uvumi, uzushi mwingi unaendelea kiasi kwamba ni kumbukujua nini cha kuamini. Ni kweli kwamba kwa teknolojia ya sasa hivi yenye vitu kama interneti na WhatsApp taarifa sisizo za kweli zinaweza kusambaa kama moto wa msituni kumbuka chochote unachokisikia kutoka kwa watoto wengine au kitu unachokiona mtandaoni unatakiwa kujiuliza kwanza kwa kina kama taarifa ni ya kuaminika kabla hujaamini na hakikisha unaangalia kama taarifa hiyo ni ya kuaminika kabla hujasambaza inaweza kuwa ngumu lakini marafiki wa Bongo Kids wana wimbo wa kutusaidia kuna wakati taarifa sio za kweli kwa hiyo inabidi ufikiri na kama tujiamini kila tunachokisikia tuchukue muda kukifikiria ni cha ukweli au ni cha uongo sikilizeni watoto tuwaambie imetokea kwa nani nani ni nani ni muamini nani mm. Fikiria kwa makini, imeandikwa kwa nini? Kwa nini taarifa imesambazwa kusaidia ukweli? <laughs> mm, Imba na mimi. Taarifa imetokea kwa nani? Je, unamwamini mwandishi? Taarifa iliandikwa kwa nini? Taarifa ya uongo au taarifa ya ukweli? Taarifa imetokea Sasa kama una swali lolote kuhusu kirusi cha corona COVID-19 muulize mtu mzima akusaidie kuangalia kwenye vyanzo vya kuaminika Shirika la afya duniani WHO ni sehemu sahihi ya kuanzia wana ukurasa wenye taarifa za uzushi zinazosambazwa na wanathibitisha kama ni za kweli au sio za kweli lakini kwa kipindi hiki kumbuka kuna wa mikono yako kila wakati kwa sabuni na maji safi angalau kwa sekunde 20 hehehe <laughs> kutogusa macho na pua na mdomo tutaonana wakati mwingine kwa heri <laughs> This is Fact Finder from the BBC. Fake news was so good that um, so many issues arose before the demonstrations. The authoritative sources of information, you know, it is becoming difficult to identify them. Now, what was the role of misinformation in Zimbabwe's protests? We we'll tell you what we found out. We we'll look at what happens when Facebook works with independent fact-checking organizations to combat misinformation on their platform. And social media applications are tightening the news on misinformation with new features on their sites. This is the time to make sure every table in Kenya has food on it. Dial star 126 hash to transfer your bonga points now so they can buy food and necessities at any outlet with a Lipa na Mpesa till. Safaricom is for you.
This is NTV. Hello East Africa, this is your world, your new normal. It's changed and still changing. We're here to work with you as you continue to adjust to life in a time of COVID-19. We've been looking at how the coronavirus has affected various sectors, including education, sports, the informal settlements, business, and many others. Well, today we focus on ourselves, the media industry. Good morning, my name is Joseph Warungu, and on our program today, We cast the spotlight on journalists on the front line. Far off in a foreign land with normalcy disrupted. We look at journalists locked away from home. We really need to figure out how to use as much of the Python as we possibly can. This American guy has decided to make masks using snake and other reptile skins. The locusts are quite persistent and now India is facing the same invasion problem. And this morning, we're asking you, what stories would you like to see journalists cover during this pandemic season? What stories would you like to see journalists cover during this COVID-19 season? Well, you can reach us on our hashtag, uh, New Normal. You can also contact us on telephone or via our WhatsApp line. We we'll look forward to hearing your uh, comments, your questions, um, and any other feedback that you may have on this program. Uh, but before we begin all of that, let's have a look at how COVID-19 is affecting the world, our country, and our region. Starting on the global picture, we have, as of this moment, 5,789,843 people who've been confirmed positive for COVID-19. Out of this, 2,497,618 people have recovered, while 357,000 432 have sadly died as a result of COVID-19. So that's the picture around the world. In Kenya, this is the situation. Uh, we have so far tested 67,341 people, and out of these, 1,471 Kenyans have been confirmed uh, positive for COVID-19, with 55 people so far reported dead uh, in our country, and 408 people have so far recovered. That's Kenya, that's the world, and this is how East Africa looks. Starting, uh, as always, in Tanzania, our neighbor to the south, they have so far confirmed, these figures have made, haven't changed much, I don't think the authorities there have released any new data in quite a while, but as it stands, 509 positive cases of COVID-19, 21 people have so far been reported dead in Tanzania, 183 have recovered. In Ethiopia, the cases stand at uh, 731 positive uh, for COVID-19. Six people have so far been confirmed dead in Ethiopia, while 181 have recovered. Somalia, which, whose numbers have been rising quite rapidly in the last few days or weeks, 1,711 people tested positive for COVID-19, 
67 people have so far died, and those recovered, the figure stands at 253. Across other countries in this East African region, South Sudan has recorded 806 positive cases of COVID-19. Eight people have so far uh, been confirmed uh, dead, while six have recovered. In Uganda, the figure is at 367 people who've been confirmed positive for COVID-19. There's been so far no one reported to have died from the disease, and those recovered, the number stands at uh, 69. While in Rwanda, 339 positive cases of COVID-19, and just like uh, Uganda, no one has so far been reported to have died from the disease, but 244 people have recovered from COVID-19. In Burundi, again, just like uh, uh, not much change here, just like Tanzania, 42 people confirmed positive uh, so far of COVID-19. They've reported one person to have died and 20 people have so far recovered from COVID-19. So that's how uh, the situation looks around the region and around Kenya. Now. A week ago, the Media Council of Kenya, MCK, called for swift investigation into claims that police officers harassed journalists who had been covering a demonstration in Embu. Speaking after touring the county, uh, Media Council Chairman, Maina Muiruri, and the Council's Liaison and Partnerships Engagement Officer, Stella Kari, said police should not have arrested the journalists, adding that their job is to ensure the safety and security of journalists as they carry out their important function that is mandated and protected by the Kenyan Constitution. The three journalists, Solomon Moredi from the Nation Media Group, Peter Mungai from Royal Media Services, and Brian Malina from County FM, were in Bondone area where residents were protesting the proposed demarcation of land owned by the Tana and Athi River Development Authority. Although the journalists produced documents to show that they are registered as journalists by the Media Council of Kenya, as is required, the police went ahead to arrest them. They particularly showed the cards to uh, one uh, inspector, Sugut of Kiritiri, but they are, the cards were ignored and they proceeded to arrest them and bundle them into a police uh, land rover. The police are supposed to facilitate the work of journalists and guarantee their safety and security as they carry out these important function, their important functions mandated and protected by the Constitution of Kenya under Article 34. It is not a favor, it's a constitutional duty that the media uh, is delivering. The Media Council of Kenya is taking this matter seriously and has called on the regional police commander to investigate this incident and ensure that the culpable officers face the full force of the law. Okay, that's the Media Council of Kenya uh, in a statement a few days ago. Now, Daniel Arapmoy, no, not our lead president, but a correspondent with the China Global Television Network, or CGTN. Uh, the correspondent with that organization has been working hard to provide updates. He's been locked out of his home country, Uganda, and now narrates his ordeal away from home. Far off in a foreign land with normalcy disrupted. I closely monitor reports coming out of my motherland, Uganda, where authorities declared a total lockdown of a month ago. When it comes to health, it is better to be a coward and be on the side of caution. This being a new virus, there is no immunity in the population. So the majority of the population are vulnerable. My family is back in Kampala. With COVID-19 invading our space, I've had to make adjustments. The uncertain situation demands that I have to chat with my family more frequently. It's never long enough. Dylan was unwell last night, and uh, I had to rush him to hospital in the middle of the night, despite the presidential directive on curfew. Some of those low moments in life, I guess, when I cannot be there to offer a hand, being unable to visit, converse with, hug or spend time with family seems all because of the COVID-19 pandemic leaves me with that empty feeling. Friends back home inquire about the status of the virus from me daily, hoping that I have some inside scoop on the latest. 
Okay, so that's what it feels like to be trapped uh, in a country away from home as you go about doing your duty as a result of COVID-19. This morning, we're focusing on how the media has been affected by COVID-19. And with me, I've got a panel of uh, people from the industry to share their thoughts and opinions. Uh, first of all, right here with the studio uh, with me is Pamela Sitoni, who is executive editor and managing editor of uh, the Daily Nation newspaper. Good morning and welcome, Pamela. Thank you, Joseph. Okay, and uh, across Zoom, we are, we'll be jo we are joined by Alumanzu. Uh, Ali Manzu is a Kiswahili editor at uh, KTN, who is also joining us uh, for this discussion. We'll also have with us uh, William Olojanak, who is the chair of the Kenya Correspondents Association, who will be joining us uh, via Skype from Migori. We'll also have uh, Alemu Emron, the group, uh, a group creative director at Ogilvy and Martha Africa. And in our uh, fifth floor newsroom studio, we've got uh, Vera Okeo, who is our health reporter with the Daily Nation newspaper. So, and across the region, we also have our correspondents to Lanana Bohela, who will be joining us from Dar es Salaam. And we also hope to be in touch with Walter Mwesije uh, from Kampala in Uganda. First of all, to uh, you, Pamela. Uh, first of all, let's start with yourself. How has your world changed as a result of COVID-19? Or is it normal? Is it <laughs> business as, 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 as it was before? Uh, thanks, Joseph. Uh, COVID has changed my life in many ways, but uh, more importantly, it's changed how we are producing the Daily Nation newspaper, which I edit. Uh, so I've been working from home for the last two months, uh, producing the paper from home. Um, as opposed to being here. As opposed to working in the newsroom until the paper goes to press. So that's one way that it has changed. But it has also changed the way we have managed uh, everything in terms of our journalism and also it has changed our business as a media house. Uh, so in terms of the journalism, we have had to empty the newsroom virtually, send people uh, home on leave and ask a number of people to work from home so that we maintain uh, a safe working environment for those who must be in the newsroom. Um, we are also, as I said, all the production people are actually working from home. Uh, it entailed kitting them up to ensure that they can produce the paper from, from home. Okay. Yes. Pamela, thank you. Now, uh, let me cross over to Ali Manzu. Good morning and welcome to your world. Good morning, Joseph Arungo. How are you? Very well. And nice to see you again. Now, let me start with uh, you. You're at KTN, uh, leading the Kiswahili desk and the Kiswahili team there. How has COVID changed your own world? Thank you very much. I'm part of the team that leads uh, the Swahili team at uh, KTN. That is the standard. And uh, kindly allow me to use my Swahili if uh, you don't mind. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Asante sana. Joseph nafurai sana kwa sile nae. Kwa uhakika nitasema COVID ama virusi hivi va COVID vimebadilisha ulimwengu na katika tasnia wanahabari pia kuna mabadili kwa mbao ya maweza konekana tangu serikali kutangaza kwa mba Kenya ina virusi hivi mnamo muwezi wa machi tare kuminatatu pale. Ni zaidi ya mezi miwili sasa na mabadiliko yenyewe yametuathiri jinsi tunapotenda kazi yetu hususan katika uh, vyumba vya habari unakuta idadi kwanza idadi ile kamili ya wanahabari imepunguzwa kwa nusu na hili ni jambo ambalo limepelekea kuwepo na kazi ya ziada hasa kwa wale ambao ni wahariri wenzangu ambao tunasaidiana katika kuhakikisha kwamba tunaandaa taarifa namna ambavyo inavyohitajika na kwa upande mwingine imekuwa ni changamoto maana unakuta tunaangazia sana taarifa za virusi hivi vya covid kiasi cha kwamba tuna hatu wapi kile ambacho wanachostahili watazamaji wetu kulingana na katiba vile ninavyoashiria kwamba ni lazima tuarifu na chochote kile kinachoendelea kwa hiyo unakuta hii ni moja ya changamoto kubwa ambayo mimi kama mahariri na vile vile mwanahabari viwanjani nimekuwa tukipambana nayo katika vyumba vya habari na sasa ali nikuulize katika hii hali ya kujaribu pengine kutotangamana kwa karibu kama tunavyoshauriwa na serikali ili kujikinga na maradhi haya kwa katika chumba cha habari hii imekuwa na maana gani hasa 
bila shaka imeona ama tumeona mtazamo ni kana kwamba kuna mtazamo mpya ulimwenguni na hususan katika vyombo vya habari ile tatizo kubwa ambalo tulikuwa nalo ilikuwa tunarundikana katika chumba cha habari lakini hivi sasa kwa sababu zile idadi za wafanyikazi wenzangu zimepunguzwa unakuta kidogo kuna nafasi na unakuta kwamba hatuko wengi katika chumba cha habari na hili ni jambo moja muhimu sana kulingana na vile viwango ambavyo vimetolewa na shirika lile la umoja mataifa la uhusiano na masuala ya afya ni WHO kwamba tusitangamane sana katika kuhakikisha kwamba hakuna ule uwezekano ama ile hatari ya kusambaa kwa virusi hivi hili ni swala ambalo tumeliona katika vyombo vya habari na ndio ile kawaida ambayo inayojiingiza polepole katika miezi miwili na nusu ambayo tumekuwa tukiendelea na kazi zetu katika vyombo vya habari ali asante subiri na rejea uh, niende kwake vira okeo good morning and welcome to your world good morning good morning joseph okay now you're on our fifth floor studio which is one floor away from where i am just to make sure that we do proper physical and uh, you know social distancing how has covid affected you personally uh First of all, it's made my beat, which is often in most many newsrooms in Kenya seen as a prestige. You know, politics and sports are a sacred place in the newsroom. But now health reporters are, we've been on work day to day since March. Actually, not March, much before that, since this thing was reported. So now people are realizing it's important to have those specialized beats like health and and that has made us be on the front line every day it has also ch changed my perception of global health like i have had to extend my beat more than the ordinary diseases um the cholera the malaria the hivs so for covid-19 i had to increase my source base like virologists are people we used to talk about uh, in, in a very little way, but now virtually every other report that we have, there's a virologist, there an epidemiologist, have had to refresh my way of interpreting scientific uh, research papers because we have to make sure that every other reporting is factual. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Vera. Uh, stay with us, Abi. Let me come back to you, uh, Pamela. Now, because of the social distancing and all the other precautions that journalists have to take, how does that impact the way journalists integrate in the newsroom, the way editors consult with their teams physically? Uh, actually, Joseph, I think we are very lucky in a way that uh, the coronavirus struck at a time when the world was very digital. So, as you say here in, in, in the TV world, the show must go on. So even for us, the show goes on, but it goes on mostly online, on the phone. We do not have physical meetings. Uh, but it's impressive because uh, even with all those restrictions, we are still able to put out a decent piece of work every day. Are, are there things that you miss? Just an editor strolling down the desk to a reporter say, what did you mean by this line? Could we change this a little bit? Uh, clearly, you miss that, and you know, I usually in the newsroom, it's a very friendly environment. You talk to each other all the time. You consult all the time. So now, if you need to clarify anything, you have to make a telephone call, or you have to send an email, or you have to ask somebody to come onto some platform so that you can have a conversation. We miss those interactions. But in terms of also gathering our stories, uh, we realize that for safety reasons, most of our work cannot be done physically. So it's only in very special circumstances that our journalists will really go out on the ground to interact with the people who might be infected. S okay. And in such a case, you have to take all the precautions to protect the journalist first. So those are some of the things that we miss. The on-ground reporting is not as much as it would be in normal times. Okay. Yeah. All right, now let me cross over to uh, Migori. Good morning, William Olojanak. Good morning, good morning, Joseph. Welcome to your world. I want to know how has COVID changed you personally? Uh, 
uh, as you can see i'm actually working from home in migori so i've been fairly confined in terms of how i've been working okay now you are the chair of the kenya correspondence association um just briefly we'll get into the detail first but what kind of impact has covid 19 had on correspondence on the ground many of them have been working from the house and that uh, means that uh, uh, they are constrained uh, they Janak, cannot go out to the field Janak, uh, keep, keep going they ask don't you, have uh, hello Janak, one moment hello uh, yes please turn down the volume of your tv okay. so that we we reduce the delay and then when you hear your voice uh, coming back to you uh, don't worry too much we're just trying to minimize that echo and right. that uh, Repeat. So, and yeah, if, you, if, you, if your TV okay. volume is low, that will help so that you can hear is me that almost fine? instantly. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me let me try again. So, tell me about your uh, the correspondents who are members of your association. How have they been in fact, uh, impacted by by this uh, COVID nineteen? Yeah. As I was saying, many of the correspondents have had to work from home, and uh, what we know is that uh, the the, 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 in some media houses, even in the bureaus, many of them have been asked to go or operate from home. So in the process, many of them do not have the luxury of, uh, you know, the office setup, the, the infrastructure, the, the internet, the telephones. So contact with the, contact with the news sources, and many others are not are not able to you know they are not able to to, to work uh, optim optim optimally okay uh william just stay on the line uh, let me come back to you alimanzu sasa nikuulize hali hii tulionayo ya covid 19 uh, imetugeuza kuwa watangazaji nyumbani sijui kama nyumbani kwako pia imebidi na wewe ukageuza nyumbani ikawa ndio kituo cha utangazaji uh, kusema kweli upande wangu sijageuza napenda kazi yangu sana na mara nyingi huwa najikuta ni ofisi ni ingawa kuna baadhi ya watangazaji wenzangu ambao tutafanya nao na hata kuna wengine ambao katika vituo ambavyo tunafanya pamoja tunaelewana ni kwamba wao wamelazimika kufanya nyumbani lakini unapokuta wewe ndio mhariri na tena saa nyingine unashughulika katika uundaji wa taarifa zile basi unajikuta uko ofisini Tuala la kutangaza nyumbani si baya. Vyombo vya kimataifa mpaka leo kuna baadhi wanafanya kazi hiyo nyumbani. Jana usiku nikiangalia kwa mfano hichi chombo kimoja cha kimataifa nilimpata mtangazaji yuko nyumbani kwake na anaendelea na kazi hii. Si jambo geni inawezekana cha msingi ni kwamba unapeana taarifa kwa wakati unaofaa na unashirikiana vyema na baadhi ya wale ambao mnasaidiana nao kuandaa taarifa zile. Maana tunajua si kazi ya mtu mmoja. Kwa hiyo swala la kutangaza nyumbani ni vyema katika kupunguza ile hatari ya kusambaa kwa virusi hivi sote. Haya, na je, nini hasa ambacho pengine mnakikosa kwa, kwa kipindi hiki kwa sababu haku, hamna ule uhusiano ama ule ukaribu wa watu ndani ya chumba cha habari? Nini hasa ambacho kidogo eh, COVID imekiondoa? Nadhani Pamela ametaja vizuri sana yeye kama mhariri ni kwamba anakosa kuwepo na baadhi ya ile mikutano ya hapa kwa hapa. Ni muhimu kwa chombo chochote cha habari kwa siku mara mbili hivi kukaa chini na kufanya mikutano ingawa kwa sasa unakuta baadhi ya mikutano inafanywa kupitia mawasiliano ambayo tunaofanya kama haya. Hilo ni moja ya jambo ambalo tunalokosa sana. Alafu kwa mimi ambaye pia ni mtangazaji na pia ni mwanahabari ambaye naenda viwanjani kitu ambacho nimekosa sana nitasema Taarifa yangu ya mwisho ambayo nilifanya nikiwa viwanjani ilikuwa kwa mnamo Februari pale na kutoka mwezi huo mpaka sasa sijapata fursa ya kutuka viwanjani. Tatizo ni kwamba tumekewa vikwazo kutokana na namna ambavyo tunatangamana, tunatangamana sana, kumaanisha kwamba pia unakuta kuna upungufu wa baadhi ya wanahabari kushuka mashinani na kujionea kinachoendelea na kutekeleza taarifa ambazo tutakuwa ni yenye kuzitangaza. Hili ni jambo moja la msingi sana mimi kama mwanahabari kwa sasa ninalikosa sana na natamani eh, hali hii ipate kuisha kwa haraka maana kama mwanahabari ni lazima utoke uende viwanjani ukachukue taarifa sio tu kuka ofisini. Kwa hiyo hili ni moja jambo ambalo mimi kama mwanahabari nimelikosa sana na natamani sana hali hii iishe na nipate kurudi tena viwanjani kama wenzangu tu. 
Hi, Asante. Uh, Vera, over to you now. And you're on the front line of this story and the coverage of COVID-19. Uh, what have been the challenges of telling the story of COVID in Kenya? Um, thank you. The challenge, one of them has been on sourcing. Like science, reporting of global health generally is... Scientists don't see the media as a place for, you know, a proper discourse. They're always very edgy about them. And even before COVID happened, they, there was that kind of relationship. Like, I've been in the field for nine years, and some of the sources that I rely on have been, has taken me that much to build that kind of trust in them. So sourcing has been an issue. And it certainly does not help that the Ministry of Health has quote unquote gagged the technical people. So I need to bring in a balanced story on time, but when you call um, the technical people who are supposed to give you the balance, there's red tape, write us an email, let us consult, and sometimes it, after the story has gone, they'll come back to you the response three weeks later, and you're wondering, how is this going to help me out with it? And the other thing has also been, um, you know, burnout. I don't know whether, um, but that has been across the board. Like, it's a fast-moving story, changing, and I don't know whether journalism now has to play part of that hyper-capitalized world where there's no silence, the 24 hours news cycle, and you have to keep on producing this content to keep on giving, because people want information. The government does not know, scientists do not know, so they're looking for the media to ask questions to help them kind of like make okay. certain decisions. Our children going back to school, are we safe? If I ever get uh, some sort of sickness, where do I go? So in one way or another, I've, health reporters had to be more than just journalists. People are okay. looking up to you to make decisions. O okay, uh, yeah. Vera, Vera, thank you. Uh, Pamela, back to you. Let's look at how well would you say the media in Kenya is telling the story of COVID-19? And, and what are the gaps? Uh, it's a bit difficult to judge yourself, uh, Joseph. But I think, um, I think the media has done a fairly, fairly good job uh, in terms of, first of all, just um, alerting Kenyans to the danger of this disease. Um, and also in terms of just playing our role to ensure that as few Kenyans as possible succumb to this condition. So we have had, um, apart from just the straight reportage of what has happened, our, our writers have gone the extra mile, as Vera says, the extra mile to talk to the scientists, to look at what is happening globally and bring that picture home and, and explain to people what it means to have COVID, what the symptoms are, when to know that you could be having it, where to get help. So we've, we've played a really good, good uh, and a very important role. And if you'll remember, even before the government came up with the directive that Kenyans should wear masks in public spaces, uh, the National Media Group, for example, came out with a campaign asking Kenyans to wear masks because we had done the research and we had looked at countries performance based on what um, measures they took. And we saw that some of the countries that took the measure to wear masks, including China, uh, their infection, they were really able to control the rate of infection and to kind of flatten the curve. So in terms of giving information to the public and also playing that um, watchdog role and keeping the government on toes, you have no idea how we just have to keep on asking questions and putting the Minister of Health, uh, challenging him to tell us what is going on, what is happening with the testing. You told us you would do this, you haven't done it. You told us you'd start mass testing. And, uh, and by and by, we are seeing some changes, and I think the media has played a very big role in that. Um, and Th then also just shaping the debate. Uh, like now, the, the big debate in town is should we open up the economy or not? And I think Kenyans are looking every day to look at what are the arguments for opening and what are the counter arguments? What are the health experts saying? And we are playing that role of informing Kenyans. And fr as from where you sit overseeing the Daily Nation, what are some of the big headaches for you in, in this <laughs> coverage when it comes to COVID-19? What gives you sleepless nights? 
I think for me, like every Kenyan, I'm worried about how this disease is progressing. And um, the, we actually, I get sleepless nights just thinking, what, where are we going as a country? Um, I, I get very upset by the community spread, for example. I think some countries were able to contain this, but somehow we missed that boat, and now we're in a situation where we don't know. We don't know where, how far it's going to go. Just looking at yesterday's figures, for example, 123 in one day and in different parts of the country. So it will get to Almost a point... Almost reaching to that projection, we've been told of 200 cases in a day. Yes. And, and you know, you, you don't know whether, how soon we are going to get to that situation where the government can't pick up everybody who is positive. Like what we've seen in other countries where if you test positive, you have symptoms, you're told, you know, just manage your own situation until either you recover or you die. And I, I was really hoping that we would not get there I think some countries like Rwanda have done a very impressive job where they've not had a single death or of COVID, at least reported. So that gives me sleepless nights. And, uh, okay. and then what frustrates me most is uh, because of the business dynamics, we have to do a much smaller paper. And you can't say everything that you, you want to say. You have to constrain yourself within the, a limited space. Hi. Manzu... Hapo KTN, changamoto za, ku, eh, za kutoa habari kuhusiana na COVID ni zipi kwa, kwa mauni yako? Zati kwa mauni yangu, changamoto ambazo tunazokumbana nazo kwanza unakuta ni idadi. Unakuta kama kundi zima la waandalizi ambao pia ndio na otarisha tarifa. Unakuta idadi yao imepunguzwa kwa sasa. Ina manisha nini? Inatupelekea sisi kumpunguzia taarifa zile ambazo wanazostahili kutazama makusikia mtazamaji wetu. Hii ni changamoto kubwa maana tumezoea siku za nyuma kabla ya virusi hivi kusambaa na kutajwa kuwa tuko katika ile hali ambayo Sauli Mungu mzima unayoshuhudia. Tulikuwa tunapeana taarifa. Unakuta kwa mfano katika taarifa zetu za mwendo wa saa unakuta kulikuwa ni jisaa zima pale la kupewa taarifa lakini katika siku hizi unakuta changamoto kubwa ni kwamba tumetoa fursa ama tujatoa fursa bali tumepunguza idadi ya muda ambao unaohitajika kuhakikisha kwamba mtazamaji wetu anapokea kile ambacho anachostahili. Hii ni changamoto kubwa ambayo imechangiwa zaidi na upungufu wa idadi ya wafanyikazi. Manake tunakuta kwamba idadi imepunguzwa kutokana na ile hali ya kuhakikisha kwamba hatutangamani kwa wingi katika sehemu moja. Hii ndio changamoto kubwa ambayo tunakumbana nayo katika vyombo vya habari. Alafu pia kuna changamoto nyingine. Kwa yule ambaye ni mpenzi na anaelewa namna taarifa zinafaa kupeanwa na ziwe za usawa na zimesawazishwa zaidi. Unakuta siku hizi taarifa nyingi tunazozipokea pia kutoka kwa baadhi ya washirika wetu ambao ni wale correspondents ambao wako kwenye mashinani kule wao pia kutokana na changamoto walionayo kama ambayo imetajwa na William pale upungufu wa rasilimali za kutosha kuhakikisha wanatekeleza wajibu wao ama kazi zao wengi wamepelekea kufanya kazi majumbani unakuta kule hakuna mawasiliano mazuri kwa mfano internet ambayo ina, inapatikana kiurahisi ili kutuma taarifa zao hii pia ni moja wapo ya changamoto ambayo inalemaza jitihada zetu za kuhakikisha kwamba tunaleta taarifa kutoka maeneo mbali mbali hizi ni baadhi tu ya changamoto ambazo tunazoziona kwa sasa ambazo zipo katika uh, shirika letu hili la KTN hapa nchini Kenya. Haya, shukran. Uh, Vera, I just before I change direction, just staying on the coverage of COVID and you as a health reporter because we only have one story in town which is a story of COVID-19, um, newsrooms and media organizations have had to deploy their people and their resources to cover just the one story. So we are seeing on, on NTV and other places, for example, political journalists, hardcore political journalists now diving into the health story. What has that meant for you? Are people coming to you for consultancies and, and guidance? You've been doing this bit for a long time. <clears throat> Thank you. Luckily for us, at the Daily Nation, we have had to do collaborations like... Um, the political reporters are graceful enough to know that this is a complex story. It has very many moving parts. And not to throw shade on political reporting, science reporting is a matter of life and death. Like, the, we don't have duruza kwaminika or sources reliable to the, it has to be a particular person. You have to attribute it to an individual and not just any individual, not just any scientist. If someone is commenting on, say, testing, it has to be a pathologist, 
it has to be someone who is in virology if it is about public health it has to be a public health expert and epidemiology so there's also those specialties within the science field itself so we have had to do a lot of those collaborations and i, I appreciate that but on the flip side because i watched what my colleagues are doing sometimes when that is not controlled when you take your star reporters your star political reporters and newsroom should be graceful enough to see that sometimes it goes overboard like um the the, the 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 product that comes out is we really want we decided as health reporters that we are not going to scare monga already people are very anxious they're already uh, scared so you do not want to add into that so every single day we ask the so what factor beyond the numbers and um i think the daily nation was among the first um, my, my boss bernard mwinzi and my colleague nasibu kabale they, they adorned themselves with the entire um, outfit and went into the wards. So you go beyond the story to show people that it's bad, but this is what the government is doing and there's a, there's a loophole here. So that can only happen if we have those collaborations. We cannot say that keep political reporters out of science matters because the truth is there are very few specialized health reporters. Health and science is not quote unquote a sexy bit. So not so many people come into it and then it's very complex it's boring as much as it touches people so we cannot say don't let political reporters come but you we have to collaborate we have to work together because there are also some things that science journalists can learn from from political reporters like i have okay. learned about the pursuit of a story from political reporters in a way that I never thought I would. Okay, yeah. and, and in fairness, the health story is also a political story. It certainly is now, uh, yeah. more, than, more than ever before. Alimanzu Ndreje Kwako, sasa kuna tukiwangalia wandishi kama binadam wakawaida, kuna waswasi kuhusia na pengine na biashara hii, fani yetu hii, kidogo haingizi hela kama siku za nyuma, e, kuna waswasi wa pengine ku uh, ambukizwa uh, maradhi haya ya, ya, ya COVID-19 uh, sujui wandishi ambao unakutana una, una, una nao unatangamana nao hofu zao ni zipo Asante hofu zipo ukiangalia kinachoendelea hususan katika baadhi ya vyombo vya habari kuna hofu kwanza kabisa hii ni changamoto na kama unavyoelewa asilimia kubwa ya vyombo vya habari ni vyombo ambavyo vinamilikiwa na watu binafsi hii ni changamoto kwao kwanza manake wao wanategemea zaidi mapato ambayo yanatokana na mauzo yao katika uh, vyombo hivi lakini ukiangalia hivi sasa mapato yale kusema kweli yamepungua kiasi na nadhani hizi ni athari ambazo zipo katika kila asasi hapa nchini Kenya na hata ulimwengu kwa ujumla hivyo baadhi ya wanahabari wenzangu wana hofu kwamba huenda tukapoteza hizi nafasi. Kwa nini? Siku hizi unakuta mwanahabari anatoka na kwenda kama kwa mfano mwanahabari ambaye anashughulika sana na uandishi wa taarifa za masuala ya afya, uandishi wa taarifa labda masuala ya kilimo ama masuala mengine unakuta kazi yake imebanwa sasa. Akifika ofisini taarifa ambayo umepewa kipaumbele unakuta ni taarifa ambayo unahusiana na masuala ya afya kwa mfano virusi hivi vya COVID anajikuta kwamba labda hana nafasi ya kuandika kile ambacho anachotaka. Na pia cha msingi ukiangalia sasa vyombo vingi vimepunguza watu kusafiri kwa sababu hawataki watangamane sana. Nakuta mwanahabari ni mpaka atoke nje ya mji ama nje ya sehemu ambayo anafanyia kazi ili apate taarifa ambazo ziko tofauti na kile ambacho kipo pale. Sasa kutosafiri huku pia kunapunguza ile nafasi yake ya kuonekana kazi yake. Hii ni hofu kwake sasa na tukija sasa kwenye baadhi ya wale ambao ndio wamiliki wa vyombo vya habari wasiwasi wao mkuu ni lile pato ambalo unakuta sasa limeshuka siwezi zungumza kwa undani maana hili ni tari hii ni ni, 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 ni swala ambalo linaloangaziwa kiundani zaidi sao, kinachoendelea sao. labda kinachoendelea hivi sasa serikali tumeona wamejitokeza na kubail out some of these institutions like the financial institutions and uh, other business sectors nadhani ingekuwa vyema pia serikali iangalie kwa manufaa ya huyu mwanahabari ambaye yuko hapa chini mfano labda anatoa tu hii azimio kama inawezekana pia waweze kuingilia ndani eh, kupitia wamiliki hao waone kama wanaweza kutusaidia pia sisi wanati nafahamu kuna namna ambazo wanaweza ingilia ndani waingilie kati na kuhakikisha kwamba eh, sekta hii 
hakuna mtu ambaye atakayeathirika zaidi ya vile ambavyo tumeathirika hivi sasa. As Asante ali, tutarejea katika hilo ambalo ume umegusia hap uh, hapo hapo mwishoni lakini kwanza while we are staying on the topic of journalists who have come face to face in one way or another with COVID-19, Masi Juma, a BBC journalist, narrates how she buried her cousin via Facebook Live. She said that during the two days between her cousin Chris's death and his burial, people at her home were forbidden from singing loudly at night lest they attract the neighbors who may want to come and grieve with the family. There were no bonfires to sit around, and during the burial, even at the grave site, there was no hugging or touching no handshakes or kisses. The government gave them guidelines for his burial. He had to be buried within three days. Mercy broadcast the burial live on Facebook and watched as comments from his friends and colleagues poured in. Some said we could not hug, touch, or see each other's tears. We could not throw fistfuls of dirt on the coffin as it was lowered into the grave. Okay, so a very um, human moment there. Pamela, maybe if I could turn to you. Uh, we're on the front line, but as journalists, also human beings. Very touching story there when you come, you know, <laughs> when you're so limited in terms of what you can do because of the situation that is with us at the moment. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually really sad, but this is uh, going on across, across the world, I think. The, the directives that have been issued about uh, uh, burial guidelines, and those must be followed. Um, it's, it's worse when somebody succumbs to COVID and you have seen some of the really eerie things that have been happening across the country. Some people are buried at night because of misinterpretation of guidelines. Um, some people are buried in a very hasty way, um, almost inhumane you would say, but these are the, the realities of, of the times and uh, we just have to put up with them. Okay, Vera, I don't know whether in, your, in, in the course of your storytelling on COVID-19, you've had to cover this aspect of how we are burying our dead, especially as a result of COVID and you know, how we are conducting our funerals and so on. Uh, yes, we, uh, well, I did not go to the ground to see what is happening, but I remember the first thing that we did and um, I had to write that because from Nairobi with my colleague in CIA was the man who was buried. And I remember watching that video and towards the end of it, the person, the woman asked in Dulu, is that a dog you're throwing into the, into the a grave or it's a human being? And that just shows you, and I know my culture, I know the Luo culture, how they're supposed to bury people. And some of those things, why they may look, um, you know, cultural, in one way or another, it helps people have closure, it tells people uh, heal and, and, you know, start the grief process so that it doesn't complicate into something else. So that was quite, like, I, I kept asking myself, like, would, would, uh, if that was me, like, um, how, how, how would that have affected me? And, and sometimes you really empathize, you pursue those stories because you, you feel like nobody deserves to be um, treated like that. And I remember, Pamela, when he was giving me directions and, and assignment um, uh, counsel on how to cover that story, he was like, she was like, I would really like you to talk to the family on how they feel about how the whole situation happened and then put the government to task. So I think after that, uh, in Nyanza, um, a little bit of that reduced, uh, like th that throwing of people into the, into the, uh, the grave like that, it reduced and people got to know that while there is science, it does not occur in a vacuum. Like this was a directive that was given by the government with clear public health explanations, but you cannot adhere to those public health guidelines without thinking about how it's going to affect people. Otherwise, we are going to have, uh, after this, we are going to deal with the consequences of you know, the scars in the community that have left those people, even the, the people who are adorning the white things to throw people on the grave like that, you know? It's, 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 it's quite hectic, and I've seen reportage of, of this. It's not just a Kenyan thing, it's not just a, an African thing, it's all over the world. But okay, what so comes out is, is that there seems to be a way that the government was, was, was 
lenient in how in how poor people were, were, were buried because we never saw the same thing with the pilot. Th there was that kind of thing and we had to bring that to attention to the governor of Siam like, um, you know, you, you don't need to have a, a, a committee to investigate this. You know it was inhuman and that should not happen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Vera, thank you. And talking about Nyanza, let's uh, cross over to Bigori now because uh, I know Janak can now hear me uh, clearly. Uh, Janak, welcome back. Now, we're just touching on how in terms of our journalists at the front line, including covering funerals that have been taking place, w what have they been saying to you in terms of what they have s witnessed uh, in that part of uh, our country? Again? Um, Janak, just wanted to show the experiences of journalists who have had to cover, for example, funerals which have now changed in that part of the country. Yeah, yeah right now, right now, there are there have been restrictions in terms of uh, how you can cover funerals because you find that uh, funerals are quick. You uh, bodies are removed very quickly. Uh, uh, by nine o'clock, the, the funerals are, uh, I mean, the burial is over and uh, there is, the restrictions have been around 15 people and this is being enforced very, very, almost ruthlessly by by, 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 by the local pro provincial administration. So you find that uh, unless it is of prominent people, that is when the journalists can go. And of course, the, the, there are challenges regarding how the journalists, as well as the correspondent, can travel from one, one place to another. So you find that there are lot, lots and lots of challenges. So I think that, that there has been a choice of what which funeral you can attend, because uh, before you can even plan for or getting there, you need to probably wake up very early if it is far from, you know, like Migori town or or any of the local towns within within this region. So you've got to go there very early because the burials take place very, very, I mean, very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, thank you, Janak. Stay on the line for us. And talking about uh, losses or human loss of life in this COVID-19 season, the family of a Kibra-based journalist who was killed by unknown assailants have been demanding justice for their late kin. Mohamed Marjan, a radio presenter at Pamoja FM, was found dead with a stab wound earlier this month. The body was discovered near Kibera Locots and it said he was headed to a home from work uh, when he was killed. The murder devastated the family, which is now calling on the police to speed up investigations to bring the killers to book. Now, in a post seen on social media, the sister of the deceased questions why his brother, whom he described as an innocent man, was killed in cold blood. His friends, colleagues and associates say he was an active member of the Kibera Community Policing Committee. <laughs> nikaanza tu kulia ni gari ni gari sasa ndio nikaenda kwa kukimbia na nyuma nikiita madada zake ndio wakaenda kupata ni kisu ndio wamemdunga huko mm. kazini station ya pamoja fm mm. Na manzu bila shaka kifo cha kifo chochote kinasikitisha lakini kifo cha huyu e, ndugu yetu ni kitu ambacho kidogo kiliwahuzunisha waandishi nchini Kenya Bila shaka ni kifu ambacho hatu kutegemea na mnambago kilitokea ingawe sasa kuna uchunguzi unaendelea na kuna kama kathani washukiwa wawili hivi itari wa mwamekononi. Lakini kwa upande mwingine usalama wa mwanahabari hili ni jambo la msingi na ni sharti lizingatiwe wakati wa wote ambapo anapoendelea na shughuli zake. Huyo ni mwanahabari tu kama mime mbae alipoteza maisha yake na alikuwa natoka kazini katika kituo kile cha kwa moja na bila shaka ilikuwa ni huzuni kwa jamaa na familia yake kwa ujumla cha msingi hapa ni kwamba naendelea kusisitiza usalama wetu ni kitu muhimu sana nje tunaheshimiwa na tunajulikana kwamba ni watu ambao wanapokea na kuzipeana taarifa ambazo mara nyingi mwananchi anazihitaji ili kupata ufahamu kile kinachoendelea lakini napotokea mambo ya kudhuriana maisha kupoteza maisha na kadhalika ili ni jambo la msingi ambalo linalohitajika kupewa kipaumbele na kuhakikisha kwamba usalama mwana habari sio tu mwana habari usalama wa mraia yote wa hapa nchini Kenya bila shaka na mchango wake katika ujenzi wa taifa ni sharti uzingatiwe Asante uh, now Vira just before I let you go a quick one for you from your experience of covering this story we've seen the numbers in Kenya of COVID-19 are really shooting up quite quickly 
Uh, and though the Ministry of Health had prepared us for a peak of 200 cases, positive cases per day, what is your assessment of where we're heading? Are we, is this the beginning of the journey to the peak? Um, yes, sort of. Like uh, at the moment, uh, we need to celebrate first of all that those numbers are as they are because it means we are able to pick out. Remember the World Health Organization's uh, strategy is you test uh, and then you, you contact trace first of all, you test and then you isolate. You're not going to be able to isolate people if you don't know whether they are positive or not. And isolation is very, very important here because you are removing the people who are already infected from the community and making sure that they're able to get the care that they need so that they, uh, the, the infection doesn't continue multiplying as it is. Already COVID-19 is a more potent phase. Now, Director, we are no longer importing any cases. It is now um, controlled by community and asymptomatic trans transmission. That is to mean um, in the community, of course, and then people who are, they could be looking healthy like you and I, but um, you who has a compromised immunity, if you come close to them and they infect you, you will get sick. So Kenyans should celebrate that these numbers are coming up as they are. But also, it, it's also showing us what, what needs to be put aside. I think in the beginning, money was pouring into the country and it's still going to be pouring into the country, but without numbers, you cannot target it. Actually, for any pandemic, there's not one point you'll have enough money for a pandemic. It's never going to be enough. So even the billions that are coming in, the Ministry of Health needs to know, are we going to put it in the hotspot? And even if in that hotspot, is it like there is an assessment that the Institute, Kwame Oweno of uh, Institute of Economic Affairs, I think I've forgotten that name, they did an analysis to show that some counties have high health capacity that they are very high risk and some are very low capacity and their population are at a high risk so those kind of decisions need to be made depending on these numbers that are being found where are they found at how was the transmission made so kenyans should really celebrate that the numbers are coming up and also oh, as i wonder it's also a testimony of our lab capacity the uh, as a country we are i think among one in the only two countries in africa that has elite epidemiological um, units like FELTEP, which have been trained to be able to respond to this kind of diseases and our lab capacity. So it means we are up to task. It should give people uh, okay. uh, 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 some sort of an assurance, but also, you know, make counties like really rise up because our only uh, undoing and a weak link is going to be how we take care of the poor people and then the poorer counties, particularly in the ASAL area. So these numbers it's important they're going to guide us and they're going to help us yeah okay vera thank yeah. you very much indeed for joining us this morning and sharing your new normal uh, have a good day and uh, stay safe uh, janak let me come back to you there was a story that was doing uh, the, the, the rounds on social media about the plight of one correspondent who would lost his job and a very touching story what's the plight of our correspondents in this covid 19 season Many correspondents face a lot of uh, challenges. And actually, over the, the last two months, our own monitoring and feedback from correspondents uh, is that um, there are a number who have lost their jobs. We have had to do fundraising even for rent and, and food. Uh, so the case of the correspondent that was, uh, that was circulating, we had published the story on, our, on the KCA Facebook, and then uh, other journalists, of course, transported it to social media, I mean, like WhatsApp and so on, and it was circulated all over. Uh, the, the reality is that the situation is extremely bad. Uh, there are a number of, that, that was just one case where a correspondent had lost a job in a small radio station that was initially, you know, part of the meteorological department. But we have had stories of, I mean, we have had the feedback and the information, you know, from Mombasa, from Lodwa, uh, even as we speak now, there's a journalist from Lodwa who cannot even afford rent and was appealing to colleagues. So uh, the, the question of fundraising, even internally among correspondents to try to help is there because a number of them have also reported, even the ones that have retained, you find that some of them have had their pay slashed or others have, have simply been told they, they, they can no longer get pay. We have situations where a number of correspondents have not received their salaries for the last two, three months or even more. And, and, and the communication, especially the ones on the ground, you find that the communication from Nairobi is not, is yes. not 
hope it's not uh, it's not encouraging and 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 some of it some of the communication is fairly dismissive about uh, you know when they make inquiries about when they will be paid so the situation generally is very bad and uh, the correspondents have certainly re suddenly realized that many of them are actually on their own and and i think there have been an, there have been appeals even from us at kca we have a, the media houses managers and so on they need to be humane because if this thing has caught up with everybody then you you cannot suddenly begin to to, to be cruel on correspondents refuse to to even pay for what was pending over the last two three months okay uh, thank you so much, Janak. Stay, stay on the line for us. We'll come back and continue uh, with that. Uh, but first of all, our hashtag, New Normal, has been quite active. Uh, your comments are coming through. We asked you today, what stories would you like journalists to cover during this pandemic? What more would you like uh, to see on your TV screens and elsewhere in the newspapers? Uh, Ruterenger says, non-political, I would say, at least turn the cameras to suffering Kenyans. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and then... Uh, Adopki Deli Unasema, more of COVID stories, for example, COVID alerts and educative COVID stories with less of political coverage, that's not useful to the suffering poor. Okay, another appeal for us to focus on the real issues facing Kenyans. For this as many, you say the exact number of COVID uh, cases and where the patients are kept. Okay, our health reporters all over are paying attention. Aisibania's finest, Nanzigi Obefikawapi, maana pia hiyo ni epidemic nyingine. Okay, so you're asking us not to lose sight of the locust invasion. Uh, Kenyan Dom, you said, tell us how all this money uh, uh, Gava keeps talking about billions and billions is being spent. Uh, what happened about the 1.3 billion shillings that the Ministry of Health said they spent? Mulisa, uh, to you. Uh, what does the ministry have for tea? Okay, <laughs> I've got uh, a senior editor here who will answer some of these questions. Hiya. Um, uh, Isibania, Pia Unauliza Tena, another one from you. Watu onyeshe, watu onandele na politics hii time ya pandemic. Uh, ili wa Kenya tujue place tutaeka uh, kura come 2022. So you're going to judge people based on how they perform in this COVID-19. Kevin Chogo, you're saying investigative journalism on how the Matatu operators are mistreating customers. Good thought there, Kevin. Asante. Uh, there's another here from Carol Mwangi. Life after demolitions, victims of floods. You want the media to focus on those issues. And this is Kenneth Mburugu. Well, the spread of COVID-19. I'm sure referring to how, how far, how quickly. Thank you, Kenneth, uh, for that. Uh, this is Peter Mwange. Uh, one lack of water, uh, the economy, people starving and pastors and churches. That's, those are the issues you want us to focus on. Okay, Asante Sana, Peter. Now, it might sound like a bit of a cliche, but we sincerely appreciate each and every single person who puts their life on the line. We thank the brave men and women working on the front line to help save us all. While most of us hold up in the safety of our homes, many are risking their lives every day on the front line for the greater good. Taking a moment to thank the front line How about thinking of others who can't stay home How about fighting to get these workers protection
you open up a world of possibility where your entertainment is ready for you anytime and anywhere. To get connected, ask your parents to go to the App Store, hit download and log in. Incredible! Incredible! And while they're there, with DSTV's parental control feature, setting you up for the most fun and safest viewing around is as easy as one, two, three. Amazing entertainment and learning anywhere with DSTV. Mama, how can we stop coronavirus? We can fight its spread by washing hands with soap, like a geisha bar. Stay strong and go so far. <laughs> Be strong and last long. Like geisha. Balancing between life and livelihood, I can admit that it, it, it has been very difficult. I have a young son also, who happened to be, uh, was traveling to Mombasa with his mother when all of this happened, so they were caught out in Mombasa, they are still there. Huh? And because of now the confinement rules that we have put, they can't move back. And he decided one day that he wants to go out. And I asked him a personal question. So I said, okay, you've gone out, but now you've come back and you're with your grandmother. How will you live with yourself? We can't be in lockdown forever. We have to reopen our economy. Is uh, BBI still on? Absolutely. The BBI process is one area where I have always wondered why we are politicizing. So if you feel you are not able to work in tandem with my agenda, please then, why don't you let me put somebody who is keen and eager to help me fulfill that agenda that I promised Kenyans in 2013 for the first time. Here. I don't think we've been here before, pal. You had a grandpa named Pop, right? They died when I was about your age. He's very nice. You saw my grandfather? Where did you see him? In heaven. Is this him? Is this the man you saw? No, in heaven, everybody's young. We need to get him in surgery right away. The pain that I suffered watching my son that close to death. We're in trouble here. He's much worse. Will you call some friends and pray for him? The hospital staff said that your son was not expected to survive. He saw things that I can't really explain. I lifted up and I looked down. Mom was in one room, you were in another room yelling at God. Friday, March 6th, the government of Kenya received confirmation of the first case of COVID-19. The declaration of COVID-19 in Kenya has placed an even heavier burden on a devolved healthcare system that was already stretched and in most times inaccessible. The pandemic has put a spotlight on the intrinsic issues in the sector, such as a shortage of medical personnel, inadequate or substandard PPEs, shortage of testing and medical supplies, a scared citizenry that has scaled down visits to hospitals, and a health emergency that's affecting hygiene, epidemiology, disease prevention, public and mental health. It has also highlighted the courage of health workers putting themselves and their families at great risk as they work on front lines in the prevention of and defense against this pandemic to save lives. On Thursday, 28th May, the Nation Media Group will hold a live virtual Nation Leadership Forum on COVID-19 and health from 7.30 p.m. on NTV. With the help of a panel of experts, it shall delve into the effects of COVID-19 on the health sector and the various measures instituted to ensure the Kenya healthcare system survives the shocks of COVID-19, including attainment of universal health coverage and charts a way forward for the sector in the years ahead. Nation Leadership Forum. Engaging society, impacting the nation. Okay, so we are joined in our conversation by a new guest who is uh, Alemu Emron. We'll be speaking to him uh, in a moment. G good morning, Alemu, and welcome to your world. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here. Uh, j just for starters, uh, how has COVID changed your life? Well, interestingly, um, COVID has made my life a bit more hectic work-wise. Um, the anticipation was that obviously 
seeing that in every crisis, uh, the marketing and advertising budget is one of the first things people uh, cut or that takes a hit. The, the anticipation was there'd be a lot less work, but the, um, the paradox is in a time like this, advertisers are called upon to be more creative to provide solutions and the d demand is quite high. So life has been quite hectic, to be honest. Now, we, we've been, our lives have been occupied by this tiny virus which has completely devastated lives. Um, how creative can you get in telling and retelling the story of a virus? Well, uh, to be honest, um, the creativity mostly comes in the form of uh, the solutions that can be provided. I think um, there's gotten to a point where a lot of the communication you see seems to be coming to be becoming wallpaper or similar because it's the same brief, and uh, the creativity at a certain point gets tapped out. I think the bigger the bigger advantage for people who are dealing with advertisers, for example, is. The creative mind now goes into providing unique solutions for business problems and not just communication. So there's no limit to creativity, but there's a point when I think the message becomes um, uh, fatiguing for people. You know, it's sad news, sad news, sad news. There's a limit to how much sad news we can give people. There uh, comes a point when people are looking, like right now, for some positivity from, from the advertisers and from whatever they're seeing um, on their televisions or radios or in, in different formats. Now, the media industry relies a lot on the advertising industry for its survival, and things have been looking really, really grim. What about for advertisers? Um, are things better? Not necessarily. To be honest, around the world, um, budgets are being cut. Um, I think a lot of people are actually losing their jobs. Um, so just like any other industry uh, that's not in the in the medical field, they, we've taken a hit. Definitely, there's been a, a, a financial impact. The thing is, um, I strongly believe that in the in the coming uh, in the new normal, there will be hopefully a resurgence for advertising as the demand for creative solutions just goes through the roof. Okay, thank you. Let me uh, stay, stay on the line for us now. The media industry is an essential service and journalists will continue working around the clock even during the lockdowns. This is how Eyewitness News' journalists in South Africa are covering the fast spreading virus. lockdown but if you're wondering why I'm in the car about to leave I'm actually going to work because the media is part of essential services this is the N1 which is usually really busy but today it looks like a ghost town hey, hi stay Abigail so the president has announced a 21 day lockdown and I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, on the one hand, I, I'm glad because it's going to help stop the spread of the virus. But on the other, I have, I have a lot of anxiety. 179 cases with two confirmed deaths. In the free state, we've got now a total of confirmed COVID-19 cases of 74. It is a week now since we have been in lockdown. We have been sitting clocking in here at my workstation, in my lounge area of my home, from about between 3.30 and 4 a.m. It's been very long hours working usually max about between 11, 12, 13 hours per day, trying to cope myself, trying to help my family, still be a wife, still be a mom, still be 
cooking, making sure that everybody's loved, fed, bathed. It, it is exhausting and in between all of that madness, um, I also have to take care of my own uh, mental health, which I am only relying on my friends, video friends and family, you know, picking me up. It is, it's overwhelming. Okay, working from home, indeed, what a bit of multi-skilling there. Now, what um, was it in uh, Kampala? Good morning. Good morning, Joseph. Uh, maybe to start, to start with, just give us the latest regarding COVID-19 in your country at the moment, in Uganda. Yeah, first of all, we have uh, 281 cases, and all these are Ugandans. Uh, I would like to remind you that uh, previously, about a week ago, uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, following the directive of the President, decided to review the numbers, the figures of uh, our country here in Uganda, and exclude all the numbers of foreigners and have the foreigners, uh, you know, stopped from coming into the country once they test positive, especially truck drivers who are now contributing to the much bigger number. Now, of course, that is not rubbing well with the WHO or the World Health Organization because they are, you know, you know, they have fear that if this kind of situation is not handled very well, then there is a likelihood of either misplacing the numbers or probably double counting on either side. So the process of, you know, harmonizing those figures, the World Health Organization uh, wants it to be a very thorough process. Okay, and now t turning to COVID and the media, what's been the impact uh, on the media of COVID-19 in Uganda? Yeah, well, the impact has been, you know, on both ends, I would say, uh, positive and negative, because first of all, we have learned things uh, you know, in a new way, uh, just like I'm talking to you via Skype right now, we've been able to learn how to do all our news interviews, you know, uh, from the comfort of our newsrooms here, or probably even do interviews while we're at home. Uh, you know, that's something that we knew, but we'd never taken interest in actually uh, using that initiative. But of course, we have some of our colleagues who are unable to work, uh, especially, you know, people like contractors, uh, and this is, you know, across all newsrooms because contractors will have uh, some, you know, will not have full benefits of employment, for example, insurance. And at a time like this, you don't want to, you know, no company wants to risk uh, having their employee contract uh, COVID-19, yet they are not insured. So uh, people like that, uh, journalists in that category, of course, are now you know, doing very badly because they can't earn. There are some people who earn per story. So if you don't file a story, then you don't earn. And, you know, even when we have these new technologies, sometimes they let you down. Uh, the network where you are, sometimes it will not enable you to send your story in time and, you know, news is timely. So that's a bit of it. Um, the rest probably, of course, would be uh, in the business language because, you know, nobody wants to, you know, spend a lot right now. Uh, there isn't much in terms of, you know, advertising. And, you know, these things have been told to us severally that, you know, the companies will have to look for new ways of working with its employers. We're very happy that here at NMG uh, we have maintained all our jobs. And, you know, that is a promise they keep telling us each and every day that we are going to, you know, do whatever we can to retain all your jobs. But of course, there must be some changes in the way we work. Okay. Walter, thank you very much indeed. Now, Alemu, you're in the world of advertising and maybe have a bit of an eye uh, <laughs> across Africa. What kind of adjustments have you or has the industry had to make in this new normal? Well, uh, well the most significant adjustment, first and foremost, from uh, the way we work is a lot of people moving to the working from home uh, module. And I think there was great concern about how people would be able to deliver, uh, you know, considering that uh, people have become accustomed to meetings face to face to discuss ideas. Interestingly, um, at least speaking from within our organization, the work from home module has actually proved to be very effective for a lot of organizations. As people work from the comfort of their home, um, the freedom to create, a lot of advertisers or creatives in advertising will tell you, 
the, the non-restriction of being in an office has actually helped the ideas bloom. So I think the main thing, honestly, for us has been the work from home module. Of course, there have been cuts from clients and the like. And of course, the pressure to consistently deliver and consist consistently revisit our ideas to see if they they are fresh relating to the changes that are consistently happening within the COVID situation. Because most consumers' needs keep changing within about two to three weeks at a time. So we have to consistently be on our toes with our ears on the ground to provide uh, communication that relates to what people want to see and hear. And are there habits that you see we may have to leave behind uh, in, the new, in the new normal going forward after COVID? And this would be like uh, communication habits or? Yes, in terms of we've adopted new ways, but I was wondering whether will we cross up with some of these new ways into life after COVID? I think most of the new habits that we have picked up will be habits that will stay. Uh, in terms of advertising specifically, the old habits that will have to die will be, uh, first and foremost, I think large spend on, on creation of communication will definitely take a take a hit. It will most likely come to an end. So uh, for those who loved the, the big, high, heavy production TV commercials, that's most likely going to come to an end as people become a bit more conscious about their spend. Also, communication where brands were doing a lot of chest thumping. I think you've seen ads like that where big brands talk about the big things that they're doing that are having big impact on people. That for a period of time, at least in the near future, three to five years will have to uh, severely diminish as people will now be looking for brands that are more down to earth or brands to sound more down to earth, human and more concerned about people's realities than about how big they are or how great they're doing things. Everything, so that, that, everything you say there is very bad news for the media. Not necessarily, to be honest, because um, some forms of media uh, if I'm to talk about like outdoor advertising right now will take a hit. But when the doors open up, that will change. I think the media themselves may not necessarily take that hit because people will still want to see things on their on their television or on their digital platforms where currently they're consuming a lot of the media. What will take a hit right now, honestly, would be the, the production of these assets because people are going to be a bit more cautious about how much they're spending on the production. So we'll have to get a bit more clever on how we can deliver top quality at a more reasonable cost for most of our clients as they come out of uh, the financial situation caused to them by, by COVID. Uh, thank you, Remu. Just stay with us. Sasa, Kwako Ndugumanzu, sijui kama mumeanza kutafakari maisha baada ya COVID yatakuwa ya koje. Kipi ambacho tutavuka nacho, kipi tutaacha nyuma, tubadilishe mienendo yetu, utenaju yetu wa kazi, kwanjia gani? Uh, nadhani alemo ametaja baadhi ya mambo kwanza likigusia kidogo ambao kidogo kwa upande wa wanahabari itakuwa ni changamoto kubwa as much as he had mentioned crisis we are in crisis but uh, we need to take advantage of this crisis and come out differently because i believe in every crisis there's an opportunity upande wetu sisi kama wanahabari hivi sasa nadhani cha kutafakari ni kuangalia mbele zaidi manake ujio wa virusi hivi vya covid 19 bila shaka vimeleta taswira mpya ulimwenguni sio Kenya tu ama Afrika bali ulimwengu mzima kwa hiyo kwanza kabisa kama wafanyikazi katika tasnia hii itabidi tuwe makini zaidi itabidi tuwe makini zaidi kule ambako tunakokwenda kutafuta taarifa na kadhalika na kando na kuwa makini zaidi pia tuangalie ni taarifa gani zinafaa kupewa kipa mbele na cha msingi zaidi ni kwamba tunamhudumia huyu ambaye anatarajia kuona taarifa hizi. Kwa hiyo tutakuwa pia tunaangalia ni taarifa gani ambazo zitamfaa zaidi kinyume na vile miaka ya nyuma ambapo tulikuwa unakwenda tu unachukua taarifa kama ni mashinani na unakuja unazitandaza na kumpa pole pole. Lakini hivi sasa utajua umakini ule utakuja kutokana na hali ambayo imekuja ikaleta mabadiliko katika tasnia hii ya uwanahabari na hivi inaanisha kwamba sasa tutakuwa makini zaidi ya kile ambacho kitakachomfaa na kitakachomjenga popote pale alipo kwa sababu hali hii ambayo imekuja ya virusi hivi imeleta taswira mpya nitasema kwa namna ya ulimwengu unavyotazamwa na hususan hapa Kenya pia maana kuna wanahabari mara nyingi 
tunategemea kwenda mashinani na kuzitafuta taarifa hizi na kuna wale ambao wanategemea zaidi wale wanaitwa sources hawa ndio vyanzo vya kusaidia sisi na taarifa kutupamana na majukumu ama shughuli zao zinazoendelea maana mabadiliko haya hayakuja kwetu sisi tu bali yamekuja ni tunasema ni kama mti na shina lake liko chini kwa hiyo sisi kama wanahabari tutakuwa tu tunageuzwa na wale baadhi ambao tunaita ndio sources wetu ama vyanzilizi wa kutupatia sisi hizi taarifa maana yake mabadiliko haya yameathiri wao zaidi na sisi pia yametuathiri kumaanisha kile kitakachotoka katika tombo cha habari bila shaka itakuwa ni tofauti kabisa ya vile hali ilivyokuwa ikifanyika Sawa ali, nashukuru subiri kidogo usiondoke bado. Eh Pamela same question to you. Now picking up from what Alemu was saying, the advertiser is going to reprioritize uh, with life after covid. What does that mean for for the media? Um Joseph, even before covid, the media and particularly print media was struggling with uh, reducing revenues uh because uh, of the impact of social media mainly. Um the circulation of the actual print paper was already going down and also advertising was reducing and media houses across the world were thinking of new ways of sustaining the media so what covid has done is give us the shock and the create the urgency to actually think rethink our business models because the business model of making money out of advertising and circulation alone is just not working and it's no longer sustainable so what uh, covid has done is push us quickly to start thinking about how to make money out of our content because i believe that um, while people may not be consuming the physical papers people are still in need of the information the information that journalists provide for the world everywhere is invaluable information and it's just about how you package that information and how you get it to the people who want to access it and then convince them to pay for it uh, so we are looking at what opportunities are going to exist for us as media on the digital platforms including the e-paper including for example. the e-paper for example and during this covid period uh, very many people have actually um, subscribed to the, our e-paper. We see a lot of hope in that direction. But we also have other projects that we are thinking about where we hope to make money so that we can sustain ourselves. Otherwise, uh, we would be closing shop if we do not think more creatively about how to make money uh, from the digital platforms particularly. So for me, the digital platform provides our silver lining. As, as the media. Okay. Um, William Olojanak, let me turn to you in uh, Migori. With, with the media industry taking a big hit in terms of revenues, correspondents really suffering, uh, what, 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 what are their options? Do they also need to evolve somehow, be innovative? I think COVID-19 COVID has created a lot of discussion around uh, survival. And uh, if you look at many media platforms, especially social media platforms, there have been a lot of discussions about how do we transit into the new, uh, you know, into the new, what they call the new norm or the new normal or something like that. Uh, th there's a lot of thinking among correspondents and I think as Ali Mansu said, journalists have begun to, to, to realize that certain things can come that are so unexpected and can hit them out of what they have, you know, that there have been some, some kind of casual behavior even among journalists in terms of how they believe they will uh, tomorrow will still be the way it was today you know so there has been a lot of thinking among journalists and uh, uh, i think i saw one journalist say that probably uh, we need to treat journalism as uh, as, a, as as like a hobby and look for a certain things to you know to help us survive so i think they will uh, post covid there will be a lot of discussions about what alternatives there are I think at KCA we have discussed the need among ourselves and among our membership, the need for setting up emergency funds or, or some kind of emergency kit so that in the event of something like this coming up in future, then uh, when things become extremely difficult, there can be a fallback. 
So, so what I can say is that the media industry will need to have a lot of discussion about uh, the post-COVID situation, both at the individual level and also even at the media level, I think, as uh, you know, Pamela has indicated, so that we see how do we uh, move to the next level with all these challenges. Okay. And now, William, if I can, I know you're a, you're a historian yourself. If I, if I can just change direction a little bit and ask you, can you remember a time in the history of Kenya where we've been in a worse crisis than COVID-19? Uh, no, no, not quite. I, I know that uh, uh, the post-election violence of 2007, 2008, presented some difficulties for about two months, but it wasn't like it is here. I mean, the, 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 the difficulties were around emotional uh, stress brought about by the, by the violence and displacement, even of journalists. As we have often said, there were what we call, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 displaced journalists, like what we talk about, displaced persons. But uh, the large scale, this one has been sm more large scale because media houses were not hit at the financial level in terms of what we have had now. Journalists were not affected at the personal level in the large scale way that it has, it has happened now. So you'll find that during the post-election violence, Journalists still were, remained active, in, even in the most difficult circumstances. They could be running around into even the violent scenes and, and so on. But this one here, being forced to sit at home uh, and, and, and think about how do you even move to reach your sources? I think uh, Ali Mansu indicated, even reaching sources, because we have been depending on sources. Now, you cannot even move from one point to another because even moving in public vehicles, even private vehicles, there have been restrictions and also in terms of capacity even to be able to, for correspondents particularly, uh, they, don't have, uh, they don't have the personal means in the field. So it has been much of a challenge okay. Okay. than before. Thank you. Now, uh, Walter, to you briefly, how is the media in Uganda adjusting to this which has now become our new normal very little money around uh, you know difficult to operate well Joseph it's been quite difficult for uh, you know some journalists out there and of course media houses as well we've had you know, some media houses that have actually stopped publication for example we have a newspaper here called uh, the observer that suspended uh, publication of its newspaper, which was a bi-weekly newspaper. Now, that is how hard uh, we've gone into, you know, the effects of COVID-19 as journalists. Now, you're not so sure about there is a station of such a newspaper. But, you know, if you take it down to the employees, the journalist who was working for such a newspaper, uh, you'd probably now know or understand what is really going on through their mind. Uh, they have families, I mean, they have people to feed, and everybody looks at them. But the adjustment has been, and of course, here, when, you know, the government, you, you, you're caught in between. Even when the government is out there, you know, supporting people and, and everybody else, it will be so hard or difficult for a media house or pro probably a journalist body, you know, to run to the government, because, of course, the government has the, uh, the means to uh, help anybody they would want to help. But, of course, would now stand between uh, people looking at this as a bribe, probably, to further influence uh, the way you operate uh, the next time they want to influence whatever you're doing, and actually taking the hard stand to say, no, uh, we will uh, okay. wait until COVID is done and probably find other alternatives. Okay, Walter and Kampala, thank you very much indeed. Uh, do stay on the line for us. Um, but first, let's have a look at uh, some of your comments coming in on our hashtag New Normal and on WhatsApp line. Uh, Learning Council, we, we asked you about what kind of things that the media should cover more of. Um, economic trajectory, GDP, uh, debt police, uh, police brutality, mismatch between government rhetoric and uh, Kenyans' needs. Thank you for that, Learning Council. And uh, Derek Njoroge, you say, well, the focus uh, by the media should be on positive stories from Africa, such as art and culture, science and technology and entrepreneurship. Uh, if you're going to talk about politics, kindly do not cover corrupt leaders. Okay, that's coming up quite a bit. Elizabeth, you say, Rwai and Kariobangi demolitions. I hear you loud and clear, Sante Elizabeth. Uh, charismatic Vincent Duncan, I want uh, stories to be covered of people who have recovered 
and how they contracted the disease. This may give people some hope and being able to go and get tested so we can narrow the gap. Okay, very useful suggestion there. Sante Sana. Rotich Gilbert, you say, stop covering politics. My goodness, you guys and politics. Okay, we'll back off a little bit. Now talk about the uh, courage of our frontline workers. Put to shame the Afia House thieves. Highlight the government ineptitude and its carefree attitude towards the plight of a majority of Kenyans. Asante Gilbert. Uh, and then Dennis Mwendo and Thiani, people in quarantine. You want us to focus on them, what you're going through. Okay. Uh, Naomi Samuel, why is the government demolishing Kenyans' houses despite the pandemic? Okay, something that's been asked quite uh, frequently as well. Mwananchi Mzalendo or Betero, the stories of those village people who helped their village people during this pandemic. Go to the villages and see who's helping the poor silently. Asante, we'll, pick, we'll take that up. Peter Kamwende, problems uh, of those who are in employed but are now fired or unpaid leave have gone on unpaid leave due to COVID. How some are in, unable to meet their bills and what the government is doing about it. Sante Peter. And uh, Ian Sudi, you say, well, we want to see those patients inside Mbagadi Hospital. Please cover it. Well, the Daily Nation did actually venture into that to see what goes on in there, but maybe you want more of that. William Muga, you're saying, uh, economics, uh, economic stories on our children at home and comrades at different parts of the state, how they are coping with challenges, fears, and the strengths okay you want a wider coverage more diverse coverage peter chamber you're saying police brutality and more of interviewing politicians on how they are helping their residents during these tough times asante peter we also have here another one from uh, erickson on chonga you want the media to cover how the government will sort people who have lost their jobs and also those who have also been sent home on unpaid compulsory leave how are they going to clear their bills and meet their basic needs Cover that on your subsequent news bulletins, okay? Your Amrit to Meskia. Thank you very much indeed. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with your world, your new normal. Basic protective measures as guided by the World Health Organization. Clean hands frequently with soap and clean water. Cover nose and mouth when coughing and sneezing with a tissue or flexed elbow. Avoid close contact one meter or three feet with anyone with cold or flu-like symptoms. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Avoid raw or uncooked animal products. Help the world put an end to the spread of respiratory diseases by sharing this message with a friend. Message brought to you by Sour Herbal Family Bath Soap. Working from home? No problem. Fiber Home has you covered with the fastest and most reliable internet speeds. Get connected today. Kazi Lazima Yendele. To achieve great things in life, you must do little things every day, like the one, two, three with Colgate. One, wake up, wake up. Two, brush up, brush up. Three, smile through your day with a fresh breath and strong tea. Smile through your day with a fresh breath and strong tea. Do the one, two, three with Colgate and give yourself a future to smell about. Amara Sanitizer is an alcohol-based sanitizer containing ethanol which has a broad spectrum antimicrobial activity killing bacteria, viruses and fungi. Amara Sanitizer is enriched with aloe vera making it gentle on your hands. Okay, time now to leave your world for a moment and check out what else is happening in the other world. 
Now, as if COVID-19 isn't bad enough, India joins Kenya in the locust invasion business. Huge swarms of desert locusts have invaded regions of India. The locusts have already destroyed nearly 50,000 hectares of cropland in the country, prompting authorities to step up their response to the country's worst plague in nearly three decades. Drones, tractors and cars have been sent out to track the voracious pests and spray them with pesticides. The insects have caused massive damage to seasonal crops in two states, devastating many farmers already struggling with the impact of a strict coronavirus lockdown. They destroyed harvest in the agricultural heartlands of neighboring Pakistan in April before entering Rajasthan. A swarm of, million of uh, millions of locusts can eat as much food as 35,000 people or six elephants, according to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization. more than usually frequent western disturbances which brought in the rains and the moisture as well as the cyclone which brought in some more uh, favorable weather conditions for locusts to breed have have really made this like a sort of bumper season for locust breeding so it's inevitably linked because without without those events you uh, you still have a growing local Hiya, Ziggy Wakihindihau, a Florida craftsman, has come up with a novel way of tackling both the coronavirus pandemic and the problem of invasive pythons and iguanas that damage the state's fragile ecosystem. Brian Woods, the 63-year-old owner of uh, All American Gator Products, has turned his hands to designing face masks, wait for it, made out of reptile skin. Can you hold these for a second? This is just a fashion statement. You know, I took something that's very serious and turned it into a fashion statement. One is, let's go ahead and, and utilize these invasive pythons. Let's utilize their skins. So I can buy these skins from the hunters, which is gonna help them to go out and hunt them because they don't have any support system. So the Burmese python is an invasive species in Florida. They're not originally from here, they're from Southeast Asia, and they are wreaking havoc on the Everglades. And at this point, 98% of the mammals are gone out of the Everglades. And it's because these guys, they get to be between 18 and 20 feet long, and they eat everything from rats to, to deer. Having to euthanize the snakes, I mean, this whole thing is a double-edged sword. I love the snakes. I love to catch them. I love to admire them. They're gorgeous, gorgeous animals. But then we do have to euthanize them because there is absolutely no, no other choice. So what I've done, I've just decided that we really need to figure out how to use as much of the python as we possibly can. You know, so it doesn't go to waste. It's I guess the, the silliest of reason to find out about Burmese pythons in the Everglades, they're finding it because we're making, a, you know, Brian is making fashionable masks, COVID masks. And, uh, you know, he's doing pretty good with it. It's bringing a lot of attention to it. I think it's pretty cool. Eh, ulisema umeshua na mask. Would you consider a snake around your mouth? Count me out. After two months of confinement, the residents of a nursing home in the 19th arrondissement of Paris were treated to a private 30-minute concert by two trumpeters of the Paris Chamber Orchestra who played everything from classical music to modern hits. This is much better to watch in Nanyoka. Now, hundreds of people gathered at a parking lot in South Korea Friday to watch a drive-in concert with local pop acts lighting up the stage and blasting into car stereos. K-pop fans honked their horns and flashed their lights along with the performances while observing social distancing rules by staying in their cars. This type of concert was a fresh attempt due to COVID-19 and seems to have made its way to become a solution for the singers to keep performing while encouraging social distancing, yet still able to let the audience enjoy the performance.
Okay, so life uh, must uh, continue. Now, Alemo, let me come to you for a moment. And uh, you mentioned about how the advertising industry has to make adjustments in our world, you know, post-COVID. What about the media? Do we need to look at, to, or to really look at how we tell stories, for example, just beyond the business model? No, I think how you tell stories um, will most likely not have to shift that much. The, the, dem the need for the, for the authenticity and the honesty that comes out of media will still be maintained. What will most likely change, as you mentioned, was the business model, as a lot of uh, people will be consuming more media via uh, mobile devices. Um, what will be expected shortly after we get into the new normal, however, will be a bit more positivity because uh, you go to the news to find out what's happening. A lot of times it's sad news. People are demanding more and more for some, some positive stories because they're coming out of a dire situation. So that will change in the short term. In the long term, it will be uh, the transition to, to, to mobile and digital platforms. And uh, to you, Janak, we've had uh, Alemu there and also comments from our viewers. They're looking for different kinds of stories. Um, what do you think our correspondents should think of providing now, given the kind of agenda that the viewers have in mind or our audiences? No, I think, I think there's, there's a degree of fatigue uh, with the, the COVID story. I mean, I, I've had some people say, ah, COVID again, you know, the updates and so on. And, and in fact, uh, while of course it has been good for, you know, the government to give updates all the time, you'll find that one of the things that has happened around the, the centralization of the coverage of COVID, especially in terms of government information, has rendered journalists in the countryside largely uh, idle. And it may be more important for the media houses to begin to think about what other stories need to have prominence as well. Because I think there has been a lot more prominent prominence on COVID to the extent that other stories are relegated to the background. I, I, I want to agree with a number of those who have uh, you know, given views that we need other stories. Uh, we need a balance between COVID and other stories, perhaps that create hope that, uh, you know, it's not all that gloom. I mean, uh, even post-COVID, life must continue in many other spheres rather than just thinking that uh, COVID has brought everything to a stop. Okay. Sasa kwako manzu pia, kwa leo hii story ni moja tu na story nyeo ni corona. Na iko chini ya mtu moja tu kama alivo sema loja na kiko chini ya waziri ambaye kile siku wanasimama kutuambia kile kile, wangapi wamekufa, wangapi wamepona. Sasa siju ubunifu wa inagani pengine unetajika kuweza kutimiza mahitaji, matarajio pia ya wandishu watazamaji wetu, wasikilizaji wetu. Bila shaka ni ubunifu wa hali ya juu. Hatuwezi kukaa katika muda wa kuanzia mwezi wa Machi na tatu pale mpaka sasa bado tu tunakwenda na taarifa hizi za serikali. Tunashukuru taarifa tunapewa vema na serikali na tunawajuza watazamaji na wasikilizaji lakini cha msingi sasa kinachofaa kufanywa ni kuwa na kufuatilia ya kilichojiri. Hatuwezi kuwa siku zote tunakuwa labda watu 55 kufikia jana wamefariki. Je, hatuwezi rudi nyuma tukauliza serikali katika jana 55 kuna watu wapatao 3000 ambao waliathiriwa. Hali zao ziko vipi? Je, tunaweza kuwaona watu hawa hata kama tutavaa yale magwanda nini lakini tuwaelezee wa Kenya hali iko katika namna hii. Serikali vile vile inataja zaidi ya watu 200 ambao wamepona kamana na janga hili la virusi vya corona je hawa watu tunaweza kuwapata tuzungumze nao na waelezee wa Kenya zaidi e, kile ambacho walichopitia hasa baada ya kufahamika kwamba wameambukizwa virusi hivi na je dalili zake ni zipi unajua tukipata kusikia kutoka kwa waathiriwa wenyewe hii inaleta sura mpya katika mbinu ya kupambana na janga hili na hasa zaidi kwa mwananchi ambaye anaisikiza au kutazama pia kumpa fursa ya kujua ni vipi ambapo anaweza kukaa na watu vipi ataweza kuhakikisha kwamba yale matako ambayo yamewekwa yanakuwa ni yenye kuyazingatia zile kanuni ambazo zimewekwa ni zenye kuzingatiwa kutoka kwa mwananchi mwenye unapoleta taswira kama hii bila shaka kila mtu atajua kweli hili janga lipo na ina nilazimu mimi kama mwananchi kwanza kuweza kuzingatia baadhi ya kanuni zilizowekwa Hi, uh, Asante Ali. Now, Pamela, the, looking at some of the comments that have come in, uh, the viewers and our audiences, 
clearly have a very almost very separate agenda from <laughs> from what the media does what was your reading of some of those comments and what they want to uh, us really focus on as media uh, actually joseph i'm very impressed by the comments that i see there because uh, what comes through is uh, most kenyans are looking for things that are important for them uh, they're looking for things that touch their lives and they're looking for things beyond numbers uh, there was uh, somebody who asked that we should speak to a recovered uh, COVID patient to tell us what they felt, what they went through, and how they are coping with life after turning negative. So all these are very important. And some of these ideas, actually, we have tried to execute. I remember we covered a story of a gentleman who after recovering from COVID, uh, spoke about his um, experience. And for him, the most difficult thing was not about suffering from COVID, but it was the stigma that he suffered in the community after that. He told us how his, wife's, his wife was stigmatized at her place of work, and there was somebody sanitizing her desk every few minutes just to keep away the COVID pandemic. So we, we tell those kind of stories. Perhaps we should tell them a little more. Uh, I hear a request about going into the wards. And as Vera said earlier, my colleague Mwinzi and Nasibo Kabale of the science desk actually went into Bagathi and told the stories of the people who are there. But uh, we probably need to tell more of these stories. And uh, I, I really appreciate the comment about uh, politics. But again, uh, Kenyans need to understand that we have to keep on the political agenda because it is what dictates even how we deal with COVID. If we do not have a responsible political class, we shall not win the war against COVID. Maybe and they're looking for a different uh, interrogation of politics. Yeah, and, and I like the comment that talked about going to the to ask politicians what they are doing about COVID. Because uh, as soon as we were told to keep social distance and to disappear from public gatherings, our politicians actually retreated to their very private, I think very nice homes. And you don't see much of them at all. We, do, we really do not know how they are being accountable to the people who elected them into public office. Uh, that when we had a Senate sitting, it was not to deal with COVID, for example. So we, we really need to l talk about politics, but hold the politicians accountable as well. OK, uh, Walter, one of the comments from the viewers, they're not one, but quite, quite, quite a number. They're looking for a story of hope. And I wonder whether that's the same thing with Uganda. Are Ugandan audiences also looking for some kind of hope? Yeah, well, Joseph, I can tell you that truthfully, uh, everybody, not only in Uganda probably, uh, is looking for a story of hope. Of course, there is some kind of fatigue with, you know, COVID, but, you know, people still want to know about COVID. Uh, here we've seen some stories where, uh, you know, a gentleman delivers uh, ARVs to those who couldn't afford transportation at the time. And of course, that was a feel-good story that touched many here. And, uh, you know, People came up to contribute and actually even uh, gave him a motorbike. But, you know, apart from that, you wouldn't say there's much that we can, you know, try to uh, present to our audience as feel-good stories because uh, world over, the COVID-19 came with new restrictions. There was no movement. There was no, uh, you know, interaction. So basically, even what you'd say are the feel-good stories there would be very, very few, very few out there. Okay. Now, as we head to what's the close of this program, I, let me start with you, Alemu. And I'm just looking at what does the me media landscape look like after COVID from where you sit? And, and I'm talking about media broadly, including the world of advertising. What does it look like? Um, I don't know, a year from now, something like that? Well, the first thing definitely is it's going to be mostly on devices. We're going to have to go to consumers or viewers rather than expect them to come to us. And a lot of it is going to be consumer centric. We're going to have to create content based on what the, the numbers tell us people want to see. 
are not what we think people want to see. So a lot more customized experiences, a lot more on digital, and honestly, in the short term, as I said, a lot more positive human stories is what I anticipate seeing. Okay, and for you, William Janak, the future of media after COVID and the future of our reporting from the ground, how does it look like? I, I think there will be need for a lot of conversation because a lot of things have happened, a lot of changes have happened even in the minds of journalists and within the media setup. So what I think in the post-COVID period, there'll be need for broader discussions within the media industry about what happened. Because as we speak now, uh, the media industry is not talking about itself and the challenges that uh, even Pamela was mentioning. They are mentioned on the side. We'll need to have a lot more discussion about what has COVID done to the media sector? What has it done to the media houses? What has it done to the individuals? And, and uh, what are the lessons that we can learn? Because there are certain lessons that we can learn. And if we are talking about the ground, there are stories that have been suppressed. What stories are there over the last two months that needed to have been told? Uh, not, 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 not stories that, uh, that make people unhappy, but, but there are stories about uh, positive things, development, uh, transformation. Can we probably in the post-COVID period think about, say, commissioning journalists on the ground to say, what was happening beyond COVID, you know, over the last two months as, as we focused on COVID? Na kwako, uh, thank you so much, Janaka. Kwako, alemanzu pia, katika dunia ijayo, maisha baada ya COVID, fani hii, matasnia hii ya wanahabari, siji itakuwa na sura gani? Asante, sura itakuwa ni mpya bila shaka. Wamesema wenzangu wapo baadhi ya mambo ambayo wameshauri yanafaa kufanywa. Na vile vile mtazamaji mwenye ametaja baadhi ya taarifa ambazo wangependa zaidi kuziona Hii na heshimu sana lakini kwa upande mwingine pia tuangalie ni kipi kinachoendelea katika teknolojia tulionayo hivi sasa. Covid imekuja imeleta mabadiliko yake. Tumeyachukua. Tunafaa tuyachukue na tusonge nayo mbele manake ndio mwamko mpya lakini hii teknolojia tulionayo leo je itatufaidi vipi zaidi sisi kama katika hii ya wanahabari. Unakuta hivi visima ambavyo tuliponavyo unaweza kuwasiliana kando na mawasiliano ukapokea taarifa kuhusiana na kinachoendelea. Hii ni moja kwa changamoto tulionayo hivi sasa ambapo tunaweza tumia kwenda mbele baada ya COVID kando na zile taarifa ambazo tutakazokuwa tukiangazia zaidi zikimhusisha mwananchi wa kawaida ambazo angependa sana kutukia media itakuwa ni vyema zaidi tuangazie vipi tutamfikishia taarifa hizi kwa njia ambayo ataipata kupitia simu yake ya mkononi na vitu kama hivyo na cha msingi pia ningeomba nitaje hili tena ndugu Joseph kwamba iwapo serikali imejitokeza na imekuja imebela au tumashirika makubwa katika kuhakikisha kwamba hayato anguka kama kile kinachoendelea katika baadhi ya mataifa basi itakuwa ni jambo la busara pia serikali iangalie vyombo vya habari manake vyombo vya habari ndio vinavyotumiwa katika serikali kuhakikisha kwamba wanafikisha taarifa kwa mwananchi kule mashinani wao pia waje tuangalie sisi wapate kutubela out ili haya matatizo ambayo ya leo bashiria kwamba huenda akachukua miezi mitatu minne na tunaona kwamba anakwenda mpaka mwaka huenda ukaisha tukia bado tuko na covid yatakuwa yanaweza kudhibitiwa vema na isilete hasara kwa mwanahabari chombo cha habari na hata miliki wa chombo kile cha habari Asante sana Alemanzu Janak one short final comment from you I want to know what is the face of the future correspondent on the ground is it a man or a woman with a notebook and a jembe or a briefcase doing businesses and also writing stories? No, I, I think I think in terms of in terms of tra transition from that old old way of doing things, one of the things that uh, journalists on the ground have realized is that uh, you know uh, COVID has changed the way things happen, and of course, technology. Many of them will have to to up their game in terms of learning uh, technological changes. That is really a must now because if you get stuck to the old way of doing things, then you'll just be left. You'll just be left by the wayside. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and Pamela, to you, <laughs> media in a post-COVID world, how does it look like? Um, you know, the world is talking about a reset. For the media, I think we should be looking at a rebirth, and uh, we'll have to come back even stronger in terms of our public interest journalism. We have to come up stronger in terms of showing that we are a credible media uh, so that we are different from all the other noise that you find on the digital platforms and people seek us out for credible information. 
we'll have to do more in-depth writing and reporting. We'll have to do uh, more investigative journalism. We have to do more on-ground reporting so that we can make content that is appealing to our, our audiences, that is appealing to our readers, and that can actually make somebody take out money and buy your newspaper or take out money and buy your story online. Okay. So that is for me the media. But I must say that I see hope. I am not uh, discouraged. I think this is a phase that we are all going through as the world, but we shall emerge victors. Okay, Pamela, thank you. And uh, just before we close, some quick comments from you. Uh, you've been quite busy on our hashtag uh, New Normal, and this is uh, what you've been saying to us. We asked you what more should the media do to uh, coverage provide in this uh, COVID-19 season. Uh, Danish uh, Ochiel, more on scientific bits, research being done, new control measures, uh, but not the daily update on number of infections. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Jemo, uh, Jemo uh, the teacher, Malaba Jam. <laughs> That's all that, uh, yes, the trucks and everything else at the border area. Claire and Diwa, you're saying updates on, on vaccine for COVID-19. Yes, very much so. Thank you, Claire, for that. Uh, what else do you want to say? Weekly for CMO, how the COVID-19 analysis is done at Kemri. You want to hear and to see more of that kind of coverage. Asante, a great Zika, a current economic status per county and possible means of recovery, not politics, and COVID-19 carrying 70% of the news as you're currently doing. Okay, so you want us to shift gear and shift focus. Uh, Dave, you're saying focus on the plight of Kenyans, not the Jubilee wrangles. Kenyans are suffering. We hear you, Dave. This is a Shiro. Great to see you have other media houses, personalities too. Yes, Isia Tobagui, Ali Manzu and others have joined us here. Thank you. Uh, Lilian Ouro, we want to see these people sick with corona, not numbers. Get them to talk. Tell us real stories. You know, tell the government we want a way forward for those who lost their jobs due to COVID. And that's a popular thought on, you know, way forward. People without an income. Peter Witte, you're saying the issue of rent and, uh, you know, ask Kagwe the way forward. Okay, Waziri, I'm sure he's watching. Na uh, mechukua notes. Richard Mganga, Mamku, Amlulu Tuete Brayo, na Brenda. Basi mbona mtuonyeshi wengine, tena istoshe, ebu tuonyesheni wala wako osi pia. Sawa, tumekusikia, tumekupata vizuri. Storyteller, you're saying police brutality in capital letters. So, huge thing there. Why are youth not safe at such a tough period of time? Is the work of the police drawing blood? Okay, storyteller, Asante. Another comment from Cyrus uh, Raju saying, I just want lots of animated movies to keep me going. NTV Kenya, the latest animations. Meskia, to meskia. Now, Mwingine Apa, this is uh, Jack Semiu, our last comment. Uh, we are too much fed up with politics. Focus on the real life situations at the village and slum level. Talk of how relief food is being shared. No politics. Okay, your politics to miss here. So my uh, tomorrow, we'll be back and uh, we'll be uh, looking at uh, what you're reading. Uh, so join us tomorrow, share what you're reading, uh, what you're hoping to read, what you're writing as well. That's our show tomorrow. Remember, we always start with a, a workout at 6.30 a.m. in the morning to keep you fit before we go into the discussions at 7 a.m. So just want to thank my guest. Uh, we have uh, Water uh, Musige from uh, uh, NTV Uganda Kampala all the way. Thank you very much indeed. We have Alemu who joined us from Ogilvy and Martha from the comfort of, of his home, I believe. Thanks a lot. Uh, we also had uh, William Olojanak, chair of the Kenya Correspondent Association from his hideout in Migori. Thank you so much for your contributions. I know you're also a big viewer of this show, so thank you for your custom. Uh, and our brother, uh, Ali Manzu, who is the head of the Kiswahili uh, team there at uh, KTN and uh, the Standard Media Group, uh, Chukran San and Lugetu. Uh, last but not least, uh, Pamela, who is a colleague uh, from the Daily Nation side of the business. Thank you very much indeed for your time, for your comments. We'll be right back. Keep it on New Normal, that's our hashtag, and keep your comments flowing in. Asante sana, kwaheri, stay safe.